it may be. Yeah, you've got to wind your clock up, Peter. No, I think we're too fast, mate. What's the time, Drew? Um, I've got half seven. Okay, we, we're live on YouTube now, so I can start. All right. Um, okay, welcome to the virtual planning meeting um, on Tuesday, the 9th of June at 7.30 p.m. Uh, my name is Councillor Drew Heffernan, and I'm the chair of the committee. Um, the vice chair of this committee is Councillor Kevin Burke, and if at any point during this evening I lose my connection, he will take over. Um, as you... Um, will be aware the council faced significant IT issues um, which interrupted parts of the council's network last week. And given the importance of ensuring IT systems were fully restored and resilient ahead of the meeting, the planning committee has been postponed until today. So I'd like to thank everyone for being available tonight at short notice. Um, if you run into any IT issues yourself this meeting, can you please contact Cassie from committee services whose contact details can be found in the invitation for tonight's meeting. Um, before I begin, um, can I thank all the council officers um, for putting um, this meeting together, including colleagues from planning, um, committee services and IT. And I'd also like to welcome everyone who's watching this on YouTube. Um, as always, there'll be an audio recording after this meeting as well on the council website. Um, I'll mention a few key points here um, so, we got a, so we can have a successful meeting and then we'll carry on. Um, so first of all, when you're not speaking, can you please turn your microphone off as this saves bandwidth? Um, you'll appear on screen when your microphone picks up sound as well. So if you can uh, mute yourself, it will stop the feed from jumping randomly to people. Um, during the meeting, I'll give people plenty of time to speak. So please um, only speak um, when you're um, asked to. And also please don't speak over other members um, when they're speaking. Um, when you speak for the first time, can you introduce yourself? So if you're a councillor, say your title and your name, and if you're um, an officer, say your name and then your title. And um, that will mean that people following on YouTube can know who's speaking. Um, if you want to raise a point during the meeting, please use the chat function. Um, this is where you can type in a um, question if you have a question. Um, and if you have a point of order, if you can raise that there as well. I'll go to you straight away. Um, before taking other members. Um, I'm just going to pause. Can anyone let me know if they can't access the chat function? Drew, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Uh, what's Cassie's phone number? Because I've only got you on screen. In order to get the other thing, I've got to go somewhere else. So I've got a phone by my side. So what's the, what's the number to ring if there's a problem? Um. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Can um, Matthew said he'll send it to you? Yeah, if, if, if it's, it's on, on the bottom, it might turn up. But I, at the moment, I'm just looking at you on the screen, and that's all there is on the screen. Yeah. P perhaps, perhaps, Peter, if you were told the last four digits, you do know the rest. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Seven seven zero. Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> okay, I'll try. I'll get back to you in a second with that one, Peter. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, next thing to note is all the votes tonight will be um, recorded votes apart from um, for the minutes. So what we'll do is for each item, we'll stop and the clerk will take a roll call. And be, to um, stop ice drain, I'll also pause a few times during the meeting and we'll have a break um, so that the evening can run a bit more smoothly. Um, as we begin now, can I please um, ask the clerk to move through a roll call of members? And when you um, answer, can you say whether you're present and also if you have any declaration of interest for an item? Thank you, Cassie. Cathy, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Members, as I read your name, please turn on your microphone and camera and state if you're present and if you do or do not have an interest in an agenda item. After you have spoken, please switch off your microphone and camera. I've um, received apologies from Councillor Jill Whitehead, um, and if I do not hear from any other member, I'll return at the end of the, to them at the end of the roll call. So, Councillor Eric Allen. Uh, present and no declaration of interest. Councillor Richard Clare. Present and no interest to Clare. Councillor Tim Foster. 
Present, no interest to declare. Councillor Vincent Gallagher. Present, no interest to declare. Councillor Peter Geringer. Uh, Presence and no interest to declare. Councillor Amy Haldane. Present, nothing to declare with the microphone on. Councillor Tony Shields. Present, no pecuniary interest to declare. Um, I've received apologies from Councillor Jill Whitehead with Councillor Chris Williams to att attending as a substitute. Present and no interest to declare. Councillor Kevin Burke. I'm present and no interest to declare. And Councillor Drew Heffernan. I'm present and have no interest to declare. Uh, thank you, Councillors. I'll pass back to the Chair. Oh, thank you, Cathy. Um, the next item on the agenda is minutes. Um, because the minutes were written after the original papers were circulated, you'll find them in under any other any urgent business in your agenda pack. Um, but we'll do them now so we can get them out of the way. Um, can you can I um, can we approve the minutes from the last meeting? So if you um, on the chat function, you can say yes or wave, um, and then we can. And if you have any objections, you can raise them in the chat function as well. So let's give a few seconds for that. Okay, right, I'll take those um, as approved. Thank you. Um, next item is declarations of interest, but we've um, gone through that as part of the roll call. And we'll now move on to the planning applications. Um, what will happen tonight is that I'll ask officers to give a brief presentation um, on each application, and then officers will display some slides on screen and we'll talk us through them. And then I'll ask if any members have questions for the officers. So please don't ask any questions in the middle of the presentation. Um, we'll then also have um, some um, speakers on some of the items so from members of the public and councillors and also you'll have received some written statements uh, from for some of the items and we'll address those as we come to them. Um, the first item tonight um, is on um, the land at the rear of 33 Langley Avenue and this item was deferred from last time um, where I wasn't present. So what I'm going to do for this item is pass the chair over to Kevin Burke. If any other members were are here tonight that weren't there then, um, you can't take part in this either. So if you can um, turn off your microphone, turn off your video um, and make yourself a cup of coffee, um, keep an eye on the stream so you know when to come back in. But for now, I'll just pass over to Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Heffernan. Um, as you just said, this was an application deferred on the 4th of March for committee members uh, present uh, at this meeting are only, you're the only ones who can participate and vote. Um, it was deferred to allow planning officers to further assess uh, the previous planning history of the area, particularly around flooding and drainage. Therefore, this should be the only issue debated at this meeting. I'm now uh, going to ask the officers to present a short presentation around the flooding and drainage issues only. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Gavin Chin, your planning manager at Sutton Council. Um, I'll take you through the presentation um, in a moment. I'll just put the presentation on the screen. So item four uh, uh, relates to previously a deferred application at uh, on the 4th of March 2020 at the, at the rear of Lang Avenue for a detached um, a, a dwelling. Uh, members agreed that the proposed development regarding land use, design, transport, sustainability, trees, biodiversity and amenity were considered to be acceptable. 
The application was deferred in order to review the planning history of the previously constructed houses on Kobe Road regarding flooding and drainage concerns. These are the only matters to be considered as part of the update report. Sections um, 1.1 to 1.6 of the update report provides details of planning permissions between 2002 and 2018. In total, five planning applications have been approved northwest to southwest of Covey Road, as shown on this OS map. Various applications have been approved via the planning inspectorate or the council. In some cases, conditions have been attached regarding drainage measures within the development. The Building Control Department at Sutton have confirmed that submitted building regulation approvals went through approved inspectors. Furthermore, there is no means by which the Council can illegally obtain information from an approved inspector. However, it should be noted that Building Control have confirmed there are no drains have confirmed there are no drains as uh, sewers in Cove Road and it's, and it's assumed that they are connected to main drains. It's important to understand that there are no records of underground aquifers or rivers. Thames Water have confirmed between 2015 and 2020, a total of eight properties constructed have applied and obtained appropriate approval to connect into foul and surface sewers located in Langley Avenue. It should be noted that Thames Water have been um, uh, contacted in regarding have contacted regarding historic flooding complaints in the area, and have confirmed that two complaints were received between 2002 and 2019. Thames Water have confirmed to connect to the main sewer system, an application is required once planning permission has been granted. This process takes 21 days, and most and must comply with technical guidance as set out by Thames Water. This provides necessary reassurance to neighbouring occupiers that drainage and flooding issues will be effectively managed. Further to this, the Council's Flood Drainage Officer has confirmed that they support the application. Only one complaint has been received to date. Following the deferral of the planning application, that the Council sent out letters on the 20th of April and 15th of May to understand the drainage and flooding matters arising from residents. A mixed response was received from local residents in relation to service water flooding. It would, be, um, it would appear in many instances due to prolonged rainfall, surface water flooding was present. Some comments have arisen due to construction of houses along um, Kobe Road. Surface water flooding has become more prominent. Further to this, some residents have implemented flood risk mitigation to reduce surface water flooding. Over the next uh, few slides, I must take you through some pictures which have been received from local residents. The first uh, picture on the screen shows uh, a property at 25 Langley Avenue. Um, which shows pictures outlining the effect of prolonged rainfall on the rear, rear of, the, of the patio. A further picture of the rear garden when works are being undertaken, uh, rainfall um, just sits on the clay soil and, are, and, and is unable to drain through um, the actual surface of, of the actual clay. This is another property on, on 31 Langley Avenue which shows surface water flooding in the rear garden. And uh, this is 57 Langley Avenue, another rear garden suffering of prolonged uh, rainfall in the local area. This is another property on Burnham Drive. As you can see, these gardens have had uh, prolonged rainfall, which has caused surface water flooding to actually occur. 64A Langley Avenue. This is a property which is which is on the opposite side of Langley Avenue, and it's away from the properties in Covey Road. And as you can see, even though these properties are not near uh, these properties in Covey Road, they are more susceptible. They are more prone to um, uh, rainfall and also surface water flooding in the local area. In conclusion, sorry. 
However, in regard to all the matters outlined within the update report and presentation this evening, surface water flooding has been an issue in the local area prior to the construction of houses on Kobe Road. There is not substantive links between the properties being erected on Kobe Road and reported surface water flooding. Finally, officers have explored all avenues and conclude due to the prolonged rainfall within the local area, London clay saw are more susceptible to waterlogging in periods of prolonged rainfall. On this basis, given the further information and further evidence provided, <coughs> plan permission should be granted subject to its conditions. Thank you, Chair. That concludes my presentation. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Councillor Shields, I see on the on the chat, you, you said you can't see the pictures. Has that changed? No, it hasn't changed. I can't see a thing. All I can see is a red G pulsating with Gavin's uh, with Gavin's speech. That okay, well, it. I mean, it was basically pictures of flooded gardens. I mean, I don't know whether you you know you feel that's um, you you can get sufficient information without having having seen the pictures or not. I, I imagine they are the same pictures we saw at the last meeting. I think there's some new ones, but it's basically back gardens flooded. Um, so. I think if if you can picture that, you've, you've got the, the evidence there. As we have various officers um, tuning into this, and I have an iPad, can I ask them for some information about how we, I would gain pictures? Because we've got a long meeting tonight, and uh, this is not a good start. Hello, Chair. Sorry, it's, it's Matthew Stickley, Committee Services Team Leader. Hello, um, hello. Um, I'll get the pictures sent around to members in a moment. I think it's probably just to do with individuals' uh, screen layouts, but... We'll get them sent around shortly, okay? Uh, okay, not sure how I'll receive it, but we'll see how we go. Uh, via email, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so um, we'll take questions now regarding the presentation. Uh, ask uh, members if they wish to uh, ask a question on points of clarification of any of the statements regarding the flooding and drainage. If they ask the appropriate officer to or then ask the appropriate officer to respond. So basically it's only on this section that we're we're interested in the, the flooding report. Uh, once the questions have been answered, we'll move on to the debate. So are there any questions? Uh, so looking at the chat at the moment, uh, I have Councillor Shields. So if you want to ask your question, Councillor Shields. Yes, thank you. I can hear you loud and clear. That's a good thing. Um on the assessment, which is page 3.1.10, sorry, 1.10, um, Gavin alluded to, or sorry, he described the process that takes 21 days from the receipt of an application for mains drainage. And we, and we go on to some uh, fairly hefty amount of words uh, to, to decide whether Thames Water can basically agree that we can continue. Can we just be sure? Is that for surface water or is it just for foul or what we might call sewer water? Um, Councillor Shields, this is for both. This is for both surface water and sewer, sewer connections. So just to be sure then, Thames Water will take a, uh, an ownership of water runoff as part of their assessment. Yeah, so as part of the actual process, um, they get to a certain stage within the actual construction phase of the development and they can't go past a certain stage to get it connected to the main sewer system. So what happens is um, so there'll be an inspection from Thames Water. So once uh, an application is submitted to Thames Water, someone will come down the site and do an inspection to make sure everything's above, above board. And then, and then if they say the connection is fine and they've actually gone ahead and implemented the correct equipment um, underground, they can, they, can, they can carry on with the construction work of the scheme. So just to be sure, would this be potentially include some form of underwater tank, which would, because obviously the Thames water do not, as far as I know, accept foul and uh, sewage water, and surface water runoff into their system. They only accept sewage into their system. But you're now yeah. telling you're now telling me they accept surface water as well, subject to the right um, system. I mean, through um, since the deferral of the application at planning committee, 
officers have 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 basically um, gone to Thames Water extensively throughout the whole process. And um, yes, they do accept that. And also um, they've actually confirmed um, that they have no objection to the amount of surface, surface runoff and sewer runoff um, into the main system. That's correct, yes. Thank you for your confirmation. No, no further questions. Thank you, Councillor Shield. So uh, we then have Councillor Foster, followed by Councillor Haldane. Just before I come to you, Councillor Foster, uh, Councillor Garinger, you, you said I was not present. I was not present. Do you mean you were not present at the first meeting? or Were you present on the 4th of March? Uh, I was present at the offer at this, yes. Yeah, okay, the sorry. One, not present was, was to the last, the last meeting. I wasn't there at the last one. Got you. Okay, sorry, that's my mistake. So I'll go into Councillor Foster, and then it'll be Councillor Haldane. But I, but I still want you. to ask a question. Yes, I'll, I'll come to you later. Okay. I've got four people at the moment, so yeah, Councillor Foster no first. Okay. Thank you. Um, my question is very simple. It's on page two, point one point seven, uh, where you say the council's building control team has confirmed that all these developments submitted building regulation approvals through approved inspectors. Uh, so. Um, so there is no record of whether the water management details above were actually implemented and there's no means by which the council can legally obtain that information. So we can set conditions and we're unable to check it. I don't quite understand the rationale. Uh, we've got an officer can answer that. I think if, if that's the case, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the rationale. Perhaps there isn't one. But, uh, can an officer answer that? Chair, um, I think we, we need to separate out building control um, from planning enforcement here. Um, you see in the preceding paragraphs, um, we've had the com written confirmation a written confirmation that sustainable and urban drainage schemes have been um, passed by the council and we've had confirmation that they've been implemented. So we have that confirmation from on the planning side. What we're saying is that the, build, the, the council's building control team didn't have the remit to go out and um, check the building regs on that. So there hasn't been that, that double checking, if you like. In this instance, though, what, what uh, my colleague has said is that there is um, a uh, an approval process in place which will run parallel with this planning application should members be minded to grant tonight. Uh, the development won't proceed past the kind of groundwork stage uh, um, and unless and until Thames Water is satisfied that the um, the drainage scheme is something that meets their, their particular uh, test of criteria. Uh, and, and only that would be um, applicable once the uh, applicant has put in um, details for approval for sustainable urban drainage. And they'll first of all have to consider all the other elements in the um, drainage hierarchy um, before they, they consider, or Thames Water are prepared to, to consider um, discharge to the surface water and combined sewer. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Weber. So I'll now move to uh, Councillor Haldane. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks for your presentation, Gavin. Um, I remember seeing the pictures last time and hearing from residents who were experiencing really bad flooding. Um, we're not we're not suggesting that the flooding isn't apparent, um, but more that uh, this building. Uh, if it was to be granted, the application was to be granted um, and, and it were to be built, wouldn't exacerbate um, these problems. So what conditions, if any, would you suggest we attach to permission in order to give those residents experiencing flooding peace of mind that this build won't make the situation any worse? I think Councillor Haldane um, answered your answer question in terms of your first point. I mean, as I said to Councillor Shields, we've... Um, explored all avenues of Thames Water and they've basically confirmed that uh, this development wouldn't, ex wouldn't exacerbate the current uh, surface runoff 
um, into the sewer system. Um, your second point in regards to the um, conditions um, on on the actual application, which was presented uh, to members on the fourth of March, there were uh, conditions attached uh, to um, the application. Um, I think it was conditions. Sorry, if I just go to the report a minute. Um, conditions. Uh, um, conditions uh, eight and basically condition ten as well need to be uh, submitted as part of um, um, the, urban, the urban drainage for the application. So they need to um, adhere to those like conditions prior to the commencement of development. So that would protect any any future flooding in the local area. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Councillor Garinger and then Councillor Allen. Councillor Garinger, please. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. loud and clear. That's, that's great. Well, I've got two or three points to make. Um, on the conclusion on page four, um, it sort of basically says that it's basically the London clay which is susceptible to waterlogging that's causing the problem. Well, I have spoken to an expert uh, about the situation and they say, well, um, it's only a problem uh, uh, if, it's, uh, if it hasn't been well drained. And uh, so, OK, so if you've got London clay and there's no drainage, that is a problem. If it's London claim and there has been drainage, uh, then 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 it shouldn't be so bad. So first of all, I'd like to know, you know, has there been drainage on 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 the on the London clay that, that we're talking about in in this area? That's question one, please. The, the the second one is that you send a letter out to to residents dated the fifteenth of May, uh, asking asking them for their experiences uh, about uh, flooding, um, uh, and and yet the the, the, the minutes were produced on the on the on the twenty second. Uh, we're still five days to go for people to respond. So, how many additional responses have there been uh, to the letter going out from when the uh, the, the agenda was published on the twenty second? Chair, uh, can uh, Andy Webber had a plan? To the, the third the third one. If, if Councillor Gorringer, can I can I stop you there? Let, can yeah. we answer those first two, and we'll come back to your third one, please. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Councillor Gora, uh, Andy Webber, Head of Planning, uh, and I didn't mean to cut across you um, there. Um, I thought you finished. I do apologise. No problem. Uh, if I answer the first question, my colleagues can pick up the second question. Um, what my colleague introduced in those photographs, I think, was was quite revealing in a way, because he showed pictures um, and, and diagrams from um, gardens in Langley Avenue, um, I think number 25 was one of the pictures you you, you saw. Um, and because it's been said that there's a cause and, cause and effect from new development in Covey Road making worse the flooding, um, the back of 25 doesn't have a new property behind it at present, yet the garden is still showing as having excess surface water during excess rains. And similarly, uh, my colleague also showed you a property on the kind of northeast side of Langley Avenue not backing on to Kobe Avenue, and similarly um, having very you know, significant surface water uh, issues. Um, this is recognised that, that, that London clay is a problem in terms of its lack of permeability. Um, I, think, I think it's fair to say that it's not conclusive at all that developments in Kobe Road have been um, a contributory factor in, in, in surface water flooding. Um, I, I think that's, um, that's something which it, I don't think there's a, that there's a direct link there. And besides which, the majority of those properties in Covey Road do have existing connections um, to Thames Water, again, as my colleague confirmed in presentation. And uh, I'll, I'll let my colleague um, continue with the, the, the rest of the answer, I think. Uh, yes, Cass Goringer, um, um, in terms of your second point, is Mark me a microphone? That's fine. Um, in terms of your second point, in terms of the consultation, that had actually expired prior to the committee meeting. And looking at the calendar, uh, we gave until um, Friday uh, the 15th of May to give um, comments on the application. Um, so there's been no further comments received. And as you can see from the update report, there were further comments um, 
like received and they've been put onto onto the addendum report and that is all we've received to date so are you are you saying because a letter here that we went out says can you please send any details of this by wednesday the 27th of may so um I, all i'm asking is have there been any any you've got certain certain items here on on page four but have there been any since then because the agenda was published on the 22nd but people had up to the 27th to to send them in yeah so as i said to you there's been a addendum report attached and that is all the updated letters which have been received as part of this application and since then there's been no further correspondence on this matter right my my third point if if i may chairman is, is that i spoke to the ward councillor uh, a, a, about the matter of burnham drive now you you said that you've consulted t uh, two people on the other side of the road at burnham but according to the ward councillor there have been loads of other properties nearby that have had flooding problems but of course you've only written to two of them so you haven't had the full picture from them that's all and you should have done i think in just in terms of that that question uh a councillor i think um yes we uh, we we've undertaken a very extensive consultation in terms of providing further consultation letters to understand the response um from residents in regards to flooding um, and I wrote to the ward councillor on that basis that um, given that these properties are in close proximity to the properties on Covey Road, they were more uh, prone to uh, being impacted by those properties. As such, they were consulted. And I explained that given that two of the properties in Burnham Drive were, were consulted as part of the planning application, this is why they were included in, in that latest raft of letters which were sent out. Gavin, I have a copy of the letter that you sent, and you just said, furthermore, a couple of properties in Burnham Drive. A uh, couple means one or two, rather than the whole load that the councillor reckons uh, has been told that there, that there have been uh, floodings there. So a couple isn't a whole load. And, and you should have consulted more in Burnham, because this, this on the, that's just the other side of, uh, of, of the road. OK, so uh, I think that's um, a point for the debate, Councillor Garinger, um, which you may want to make there. Uh, I'd like to move on to uh, Councillor Allen, who wishes to ask a question. Uh, that's the last person I, I can see needs to ask a question. So if you do, if anybody else wants to ask a question after this, please put it on the chat. Councillor Allen, please ask your question. Uh, good evening, Gavin. Um, I'm just a bit confused between the fact that we're working here at planning permission but then this will be also subject to building control. Uh, having built extensions in, in Sutton and having to build extensive uh, rainwater runoff off soakaways, um, I find it rather strange that um, what you're now saying is that Thames Water will allow this um, uh, rainwater runoff to go straight into the main sewers. Uh, so on the basis that that is uh, going to be agreed, uh, can we have confirmation uh, exactly from Thames Water that this will be the case? And if there is any comeback later on uh, in relation to flooding of, of subsequent and re relating properties, that this will then be down to either Sutton Council or Thames Water for having allowed this to happen. Thank you. Chair, uh, it's Andy Webb, the head of plane. Can I come in on this? Um, I think we set out quite clearly, Councillor Allen, that there is a, a parallel consenting process. Uh, Thames Water have been, I think, incredibly helpful in providing us with information about historic connections in Covey Road to the systems in Langley Avenue. Um, it's not a foregone conclusion, Councillor, that Thames Water will uh, approve the drainage scheme because it has to be designed to their exacting um, standards and their criteria. So that is something that would have to happen. Um, if permission were granted, the, the developer would have, sorry, the applicant would have to put in details of the sustainable urban drainage scheme that they are proposing, having, as I said, first considered the, the drainage hierarchy. Uh, the connection is, is you know, frankly, a, a, a connection of last resort, if you like. It's, a, it's the last option available. So they will have to consider other options, but they are limited. 
by the fact that things like infiltration techniques, because it's on London clay, are not going to be possible. So we're exploring with Thames Water the possibility of them agreeing another connection. They don't feel there's any issue with their current capacity, but it, it, it is all down to the design. There's a parallel consenting process. Now, it may well be, Councillor, that, um, of course, we can't control the competition we get from the private sector and the approved inspectors on building regulations. But I'm quite happy because I manage building control for Sutton to have a conversation with the applicant to um, to to ask um, if he will um, make sure that the building regulations are submitted to Sutton so we can give uh, perhaps a, a, a little bit more confidence. I can't I can't guarantee that, Councillor, but um, I can certainly have that conversation with the applicant. But I am fairly confident that we have adequate safeguards in place with the conditions uh, that are put forward, but also the fact that Thames Water, I think, are pretty comfortable with a connection. That's what they're telling us. Um, but nevertheless, they still have to go through this parallel consenting scheme with Thames Water. And I take your points about liability. I can't really speak for Thames Water in that regard, only to confirm what we've been told by Thames Water since we were asked to go away and have another look at this um, since the 4th of March. OK, well, I am concerned about the neighbours and the fact that um, if we do have even more flooding in that area due to the fact we've had another development, uh, that they should have some comeback either against Thames Water for allowing it or for, against Sutton Council. Thank you. OK. Thank you. If there are no more questions, oh, I, I do. Did you put it on the chat? Yeah, I did. Okay, Councillor Garner, just sorry, I've lost the chat function, so oh, I don't, don't, lost your question. Don't, but... don't worry. Um, uh, I'm I'm as concerned about the water flooding situation as the residents are. Um, are you saying that with your planning conditions, there will be no flooding of existing buildings because of this development? And then who will be implementing implementing conditions 10 and 11 and who will ensure that they are implemented and kept to? These are the conditions. I think, Councillor Goringer, we've got um, our flood risk officer on the line um, who can answer that question for you and, for, and give you some assurances in terms of the conditions which have been imposed as part of the planning application. Yeah, thank you, Gavin. Evening, um, councillors. So, Derek Regan, and I'm the flood risk officer for Sutton Council. So, to take your your first question, um, Councillor Geringer, the what the proposed condition is stating, and this condition is in line with policy. What policy says is that because this site is a green field in its current form, post development it should behave as a green field and that includes um that should include some type of suds um, or attenuation on site so essentially all of the surface water that hits that site will remain on site and be managed on site and if it does eventually end up in the thames water sewer system it will be released at a controlled rate from the site uh, into the sewer system and the conditions in terms of discharging them they will more than likely come to myself, conditions 10 and 11. So it will be myself as the flood risk officer uh, to review submitted details and ensure it's in line with condition and in turn in line with policy. Can I um, can I make a, a further point while I'm... Well, if it's a point, Councillor Garinger, can we make it in the debate or is it a question? Uh, I, I think it could be a question. Um, well, let's let's make sure it is a question. If it's yeah. a point that you want to make a question, if you've yeah. got a question, please ask it. Will you be ensuring that the property and maybe other properties have weeping willows planted? Apparently, they take up the water very well, uh, and and that might help some of the flooding problems if you have some of those trees planted uh, to take up the water. Councillor Goring, Andy Weber, Head of Planning. Um, we have a condition on the planning application about um, soft landscaping. I don't think we can be um, that um, prescriptive in terms of uh, what species are planted, but I do um, understand the point made that certainly, you know, a degree of planting, um, I'm sure, is going to be 
beneficial in terms of the site condition. So there's a landscaping condition. So we'll pick that up in that separate landscaping condition. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, I, I can. I can't see anybody else wanting to ask a question. We'll move to debate. Um, would anybody like to open the debate? Okay, Councillor Haldane was first. So if you'd like to make a point and then Councillor Shields. Thanks, Chair. Um, I think we were, we were all agreed last time round that um, if this application had come to us and there had been no previous development in Covey Road to the back of Langley, um, that, that we wouldn't perhaps think that it was such a good idea. But given that um, all of the building that's taken place up until this point um, I don't think it would be prudent for us to refuse this application and I'm satisfied that the flooding issues um, have been addressed um, and that um, if we grant this application and Thames Water do agree then we'll have done all our due diligence um, and that we should therefore uh, be granting planning permission this evening. Thank you Councillor Haldane, Councillor Shields and then Councillor Gallagher. I think Councillor Haldane is actually on the right track here um, in that sufficient works has been carried out. I think all we all could agree the first application was a, perhaps a little light on detail. We've all had a much bigger time to pay attention to the flooding issues. I'm very interested in, in the, um, the embracing indemnity that effectively that is the, the Water Authority, Thames Water. Uh, and that there was be an inspection and a proper methodology, which I don't believe was offered, quite frankly, last time at the last committee meeting. Um, certainly not in, in simple terms. But I think we have a bit of an insurance policy here. And I think by the, that the, the residents and the local ward councillor, who's, who's been very busy on this, we have an undertaking that the, things will not get worse. And I think that's possibly why I, I agree with Councillor Haldane and we should we should move forward, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Shields. Councillor Gallagher. Hi, can you, can you all hear me? Um, you can hear me. Yes, yes you're loud and clear. <laughs> um, I, I agree with what's been said already. Uh, the Thames Water obviously spent some time with us trying to see if this can be solved. Um, as, as Councillor Shields said, the buildings that have gone up already have gone up. They have been connected. Uh, I kind of feel that this is another property that will be connected in the same way. And the, the Thames Water is going to, we know on this particular occasion, going to look at it very, very carefully. So I think with work, the work that's being done, I kind of feel that we need to, to go ahead with it and allow for the fact that Thames Water is a, is a kind of backstop to control the problem that we, we've been talking about previously. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, I'd just like to add that I, I agree with all three um, people who contributed to the debate so far. I, I don't think we would have grounds to refuse this, and um, there's obviously a history of flooding, mainly due to with the the type of land there which is London clay um, so I certainly would, would be supporting the officer's recommendation to approve um, and Councillor Shields would like to make a comment then I'll come to uh, Councillor Garinger. Yes uh, thank you Chair. Um, yes the comment is that, that we have a heck of a lot more information than we did last time. Um, a lot of work has gone into this we have, if you like, an indemnity for the assurance of residents with the flooding issues. And, and of course, we have got the opportunity to review this if, if Thames Water actually can't come uh, agree a system. We, we have a kind of an insurance policy for, for residents, which I think is, is, is extremely important. And of course, if we go to appeal, we may not have these safeguarding effects. The, the appeal inspector may turn, if we turn it down in the face of a sustainable drainage system and the in, 
inspector says, well, actually, do you know what? I think I'll just agree it anyway and not put that stipulation in, which is the only safeguard residents have got, I think we could be helping the flooding situation by making even more flooding. So I think, I think keeping it brief, we should take the insurance policy, as it were, and, and move forward and perhaps even move forward to the vote, Chair. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I see that uh, Mr Weber would, would like to say something before we go to the vote. So I'll come to him first and then I'll come to you, uh, Councillor Garinger. Thank you. <laughs> Chair, um, uh, it, it would be remiss of me if I didn't draw members' attention. In the addendum um, report, um, there is reference in the very last paragraph of the addendum report um, to representation we received, and I think you all were um, received this representation from uh, the owner-occupier of 31 Langley Avenue to all councillors prior to the committee that was rescheduled. Um, I think it was towards the end of May this was written. And I'm drawing your attention to paragraph three. I don't know if you all have it there, um, but I need to just, just bring this to your attention that the um, if members are minded to approve the application, the resident requests that the start date for the development is deferred because the resident falls within the extreme one of the extremely vulnerable groups at risk from the effects of COVID-19 uh, and is very concerned the development would impact on their enjoyment uh, of their, their, their garden. Um, and and I think it's important that you're you're just aware of that. Um, as far as um, the officer advice is concerned on this, and we we have somebody from legal on the call here. Um, I'm not sure this is something that we can insist on uh, for the de for the developer to um, defer the commencement. But as you can tell, there are an awful lot of pre-commencement conditions if members are minded to approve that the applicant would need to um, to clear first, and you have that separate consenting process with Thames Water um, as well. So I think it's gonna be a bit of time before the development starts, but obviously the current pandemic, um, you know, we really don't know how long, you know, these, these current conditions uh, will go on for. So I need to bring this to your attention. We don't think there's a basis in planning law to ask the applicant to defer the start of the, uh, the work. But I think that's probably something that I think the applicant probably needs to have a discussion with the resident about and try to come to some sort of reasonable agreement outside the remit of the planning application. Chair, that's all I wanted to do to bring members' attention to that request from the resident um, at 31 Langley Avenue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilford. Is that something we can um, negotiate with the, with the um applicant on i mean I, you say we can't make a condition i understand that but would it would planning officers be willing to try and negotiate around that sure yeah, um I'm, I'm more than happy to have a you know make contact with the applicants we, we've had you know quite a few conversations it's fair to say um they are not property developers they they are a family who have invested a lot in developing this site as a home to live in um, so there's obviously a time imperative from their perspective, but I think, Chair, through you, um, I'm quite happy to take this away and, and try and mediate on this matter. But the advice we've had, certainly from legal, is that we can't insist that the applicant defers this. Um, so I think other other means of discussion and negotiation are probably going to be appropriate instead. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to come back to uh, Councillor Garinger, who wished to speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, one point I, I'd like to have clarification on from Andy Weber. It was uh, what this letter with the five points in. It says, point one nine, Thames Water have confirmed that between 2015 and 2020, a total of eight properties constructed along Covey Road have applied and obtained appropriate approval to connect to the foul and surface water sewers located in Langley Avenue goes on to say this is rather interesting as there are 12 houses in the new development i don't know whether you can say anything about that so i'm not sure what your question is councillor garinger well i was wondering what, 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 why eight properties are not the 12 because eight properties have applied and obtained appropriate approval to connect to the foul and surface water sewers located in langley avenue it goes on to say this is rather interesting as there are 12 houses in the new development so there appear to be four houses that uh, 
are not connected to the foul and surface water sewers. Yeah, Councillor, I, I can't confirm by what means they've managed um, surface water runoff. Um, and I know there's something about the, um, the historic nature of how this develop the developments in Covey Road have come forward. But that's the only information we've been able to get uh, from Thames Water when they've checked their records. I mean, I think the important thing to note is that this, what is being suggested here and being proposed with a, a, a consenting process from Thames Water is not unprecedented. It's, you know, there have been a number of other examples um, which have been carried out um, to the satisfaction of Thames Water. And there's no reason why this development could, uh, couldn't either. Yeah, if I can go on to say the, uh, as far as the, the debate is concerned, um, I've listened to everything that's been said. I did uh, speak to a friend of mine who is an expert on this, and I spoke about the conditions 10 and 11 and was told that you're consider, you're, these two conditions are pretty good ones. Um, and on that basis, uh, if those conditions are kept to, um, I'd be minded to, to approve. But as, as long as they were kept to, because I wouldn't like to see these conditions of ha having been put in place and then not obeyed and then flooding starts again. And what do we do about it then? But uh, as things stand at the moment, I'll, uh, I'll probably go along with this. Excellent. Right. So, um, Councillor Haldane, you made a couple of points on the chat. Did you want to did you want to come in or are you happy to go to the vote? Um, happy to go to the vote. I'll just for. Um transparency read out what i wrote in the chat which is that given the situation the applicant is in um as well as the, the current situation we all find ourselves in and the fact that there is no reason in planning law to refuse could we please ensure that this happens as quickly as possible but obviously you know as safely as possible with regards to the flooding i just like to say that for the record okay and you're you're happy for officers that Mr. Weber said they they will do their best to negotiate and to mitigate. Are you, and you're happy with that with that offer? I'll take it. Yeah, and I, and I think we heard more about it last time. Well, in fact, we didn't really hear any anything about it this time, really. But um, any um, these people are going to be neighbours if this application is granted um, and the house is built. So any mediation um, and negotiation to make sure that there is as much neighbourliness as is possible given the situation and i, I recognize it will be difficult but you know these people need a, a a home to live in and there's no reason in planning law to refuse them um so and i hope that they can enjoy their house once it's built and um also get on with their neighbors as well yeah here here um so if that's uh, the final comment i would like to move to the vote um so can i ask the clerk to please move to the vote Thank you, Chair. Members, as I read your name, please turn on your mic and camera and state if you are voting for, against or abstain on the recommendation. Councillor Eric Allen. I will vote for the, the application, but it's all subject to the fact that Thames Water will take the rainwater off the site. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tim Foster. I vote for the application. Councillor Vincent Gallagher. Uh, four. Councillor Peter Geringer. Um, I'm voting four on the basis that the conditions are kept to 100%. Councillor Amy Haldane. Four. Councillor Tony Shields. Uh, similar to Councillor Geringer, providing the conditions are met, I am voting four. Councillor Chris Williams. Four. Councillor Kevin Burke. Four. Thank you, councillors. That means there are four votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. I'll pass back to the chair. Thank you. Uh, that means planning permission for this application is granted. Uh, and I'm now going to pass the chair back to Councillor Heffernan. Thank you, Councillor Burke, and thank you to everyone um, for the last item. Um, can I just double check that um, the people who left the meeting are now back in? So I think that's Councillor Clare. You can let us know in the chat. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so what I want to do now um, is move on to agenda item eight, which is 
um, a relatively minor application and it's come before us because it's a application from um, a member of staff at the council. Um, now, unless there are any objections, um, I don't think we need a full um, presentation on this, but Agreed. <laughs> agree. <laughs> cool. But if you do, are there anybody who has any questions for officers on that item? Sorry, did you ask number four? And this is item, item number eight, so page 61 to 17 in the original. Oh, yes, so beg your pardon. Yes, I, yeah. I agree with Councillor Garner. Cool. Thank you. Um, brilliant. So I can't see any questions from councillors, um, so that means we can either move into debate or straight to the vote. Um, is there anyone who wants to say anything? Okay. Um, Cathy, can we move to the roll call on item eight, please, which is um, Gander Green Lane. Sorry, again, as I read your name, could you put on your microphone, camera, and state if you're voting for, against, or abstain? Councillor Eric Allen. For. Councillor Richard Clare. For. Councillor Tim Foster. For. Councillor Vincent Gallagher. For. Councillor Peter Geringer. For. Councillor Amy Haldane. For. Councillor Pauline Shields. For. Councillor Chris Williams. For. S sorry. Councillor Chris Williams. For. For. Uh, Councillor Kevin Burke. I'm for. Councillor Drew Heffernan. Four. That's 10 votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. All right, thank you. So item eight um, is carried. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll now go back to the right order and go to item number five. And this is an application to Wellington Public Hall on Stafford Road. And can I ask the officer, Katie, to present um, the presentation for item number five, please? Um, thank you, Care Chair. Katie Johnson, Deputy Planning Manager. Um, firstly, following on from the cancellation of committee last week, I'd like to amend the date in the recommendation box of the committee report to the 30th of June 2020. The application site was formerly occupied by Wallington Public Hall. The hall has now been demolished in connection with planning permission granted in 2018 for the erection of a part three, part four storey buildings comprising of 31 flats. This is just a photo from Stafford Road. This is a photograph of the rear of the site from the public car park. Planning Commission is thought to amend drawing num the drawing number condition, which is number one, and condition 28, which restricts some windows to be obscure, glazed and fixed shut. The proposal also includes some additional window, brise and a variation to allow information for condition eight, which is the GLA overheating condition, to be submitted at a later date. All the changes are listed in paragraph 2.2 of the committee report. However, I'll just run through some of the drawings. Um, so these windows here in the north elevation of the building at the rear are to have the fixing shut removed, but they will remain obscure glazed. The windows at the top along here will have the fixing shut and the obscure glazing removed. And this window at the bottom here, which serves a bathroom, is a new window. In the east elevation, which faces Onslow Gardens, there's three new windows here. The ground floor serves a bathroom. The two upper floors serve landings. These windows um, will no longer be fixed shut or have any obscure glazing. And here, these windows um, are to be slightly enlarged in size. The majority of the windows serve bathrooms and living rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms and living rooms. Um, and on this elevation, though, it's quite difficult to see. The only change really is a brise added to the upper floors. The scale, mass and bulk of the development remains as approved and is not considered that the proposed window alterations and the addition of new windows would result in significant loss of amenity to a neighbouring residential properties. 
For these reasons and those outlined in the committee report, it is recommended that planning permission be granted subject to conditions in the draft decision notice. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, um, Katie. Um, do any councillors have questions on this? If you could let me know in the chat, and then I'll come to you in the order in which you appear. Okay, um, so you don't seem to have um, any questions. Um, we didn't have any um, written statements um, submitted um, for this item, and we don't have any registered speakers. So I'm going to suggest we move into um, debate straight away, unless we've got any more questions. So if anyone wants to type in debate and get us started. And if I can't see anything in the next 10, 15 seconds or to move to the vote. Okay, um, we'll move to the vote. Cathy, can um, you do a roll call of members, please, on item five? Um, firstly, could I ask um, that somebody propose and second the amendment to the motion that Katie asked for that the completion date is altered to the 30th of June, I think Katie said. Okay. Um, so, am, I, am I going to propose that or Kevin? I'm, I'm happy to propose it if you want, Councillor Burke. And somebody to second it. I'm happy, I'm happy to, to second it, but if a member of the opposition wants to second it, that's fine. I'm happy to second it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, as I read your name, if you could say for, against, or abstain. Councillor Eric Allen. For. Councillor Richard Clare. For. Councillor Tim Foster. For. Councillor Vincent Gallagher. For. Councillor Peter Geringer. For. Councillor Amy Haldane. For. Councillor Tony Shearer. For. Councillor Chris Williams. Four. Councillor Kevin Burke. I'm four. Councillor Drew Heffernan. Four. That's ten votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you. So um, item five is carried. Um, we'll now move on to item six, which is um, an application in Overton Park and Overton Road. Um, can I ask the officer to um, present, please. Yes, Chair. Jodie Williams, Deputy Planning Manager. I'm hoping you can now see my screen. I can see it, definitely. Okay, thank you. Chair, agenda item six relates to Overton Park in Overton Road in Sutton. The application is before you as the application has received more than 10 letters of representation contrary to the officer's recommendation. And the application has been made and submitted by the London Borough of Sutton. The application seeks permission to install two. Sorry, my slides won't move now. Sorry, Chair. Application seeks to install two. Now it's going to go flicking. Sorry, Chair. Okay. Chair, the application seeks permission to install two artificial wickets located centrally within the park to the western element 
here and here, one to the north, one to the south, as well as the erection of ball stop fencing in specific locations. There's five locations within the park and the varying heights. Fence A, which is located to the northern end of the park adjacent to the car park, would be 1.2 metres in height. Fence B would be located, so just as it comes along. So this was fence A, the top elevation on the uh, so fence A again, sorry, Joe. Fence A located in this location and shown in the top drawing would be 1.2 meters in height. Fence B, which is the bottom elevation, would be 3.5 meters in height, adjacent to the western boundary of the park and to the rear of properties fronting onto Holland Avenue. This photo shows the location of proposed fence A adjacent to the car park element to the north. <coughs> and this photo looks towards Holland Avenue where the fence would be located in approximately this location. Fence C would be located to, uh, adjacent to the properties of Fronting Holland Avenue to the southern end of the western boundary and would be two metres in height. Fence D located in this location and the bottom elevation would be located adjacent to the northern end, sorry, the southern end and the eastern boundary of this park of the park. Uh, adjacent to the properties fronting onto Courtney Avenue. This photo shows the proposed location of Fence C in this <coughs> location uh, with the properties of Holland Avenue visible. And this photo shows the proposed location of Fence D with the rear elevations of properties fronting Courtney Avenue visible. Fence E located in this location would be 3.5 metres in height, located within the park to the south of the pavilion and nursery, adjacent to the footpath running through. And this photo shows the proposed location of Fency adjacent to the pathway within the park. Chair, this photo shows an example of the proposed fencing design and appearance, and a condition is included to require further details to be submitted for approval should permission be granted tonight. It's important to emphasize that this application does not result in a change of use of the park as cricket is already a sport that can be played within the park alongside all other sports and the use of the park by the public will continue. The proposal would enhance the existing sporting facilities available for the park users. An independent risk assessment has been carried out to review the potential distance and trajectory of cricket balls when hit from the proposed artificial wickets. This has informed the proposed location and heights of the ball stop fencing. The fencing is considered to be suitable finish and colour for the location and will have an element of transpar transparency which together with the separate locations of the five sanctions will ensure the visual openness of the park is maintained whilst providing a level of protection for the other park users and neighbouring residential properties. Whilst fence B will be a maximum of 3.5 metres high, due to the distance from the Holland Avenue properties, the fencing will not result in any unreasonable impact on outlook, privacy or daylight currently enjoyed by these occupants. 
The remaining sections are two metres in height or lower and similar in height to the existing boundary fencing and therefore not considered to result in an adverse impact to adjoining occupiers. In addition, it's not considered that the proposal would adversely impact on any significant trees within the park or result in any additional pressure on on-street parking or highway safety. Chair, for these reasons, it's considered the proposal is acceptable and it's recommended that the application be approved subject to the suggested conditions. Thank you. Um, can um, you indicate in the chat function if you've got any questions? Councillor Burke, um, you're in first if you want to give your question to officers. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's, I'm just curious as to why the fences are where they are, and I think I've worked it out, but um, I'm one of the officers can confirm, because they're only about, in old money, four foot high, I think 1.2 metres. Um, is that because there's a trim track runs around there? And are these protecting the trim track bits where people might be using them for exercise? Because I can't see they're doing much for the houses. Sorry, that's my question. What are the fence is doing? Sorry, no, just yeah. trying to. Sorry, Jodie Williams, Deputy Planning Manager. Um, the fences have been informed by the risk assessment, which was carried out independently. I believe the location of the fences is where the strongest hits will be, uh, with the from the wicket. So I think they're at directly sort of parallel to the wicket where that's the strongest hit. So I think the two either side of the wickets, fence B, C, D, and E are to protect the square strikes. And I think the smaller fence to the north is to protect the car park from straight shots. And I think that's why the fencing is in the location it is in and the heights it is in. It's been led by the safety audit conducted independently. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Galligan. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the fencing, uh, what is it made out of? It looks sort of like a metal fencing, which obviously doesn't look uh, that that, uh, that nice. Um, so, yeah, it, it can be made or is it made out of something that looks a little bit better than just uh, uh, metal fencing? The, the dog leg or the one with the dog leg on it, uh, which is what 3.5 I presume that is to try and protect the play area um, when children manage to get the grass cut and get back in there um, would that be adequate is it it's, you know I presume I mean I'm not a cricket person to be honest with you but I presume that the cricket ball really can go anywhere um, so I, I don't know if that sort of does the whole job there the, the one down by the, the cars, uh, I, again, I, I would imagine that a good cricketer could uh, go around that and hit hit one of the cars. Um, the other thing, when I was around there the other day, uh, loads of people were out sunbathing, uh, picnicking with, with children. Um, how How is it going to work that sort of suddenly cricketers are going to come in and start uh, hitting a, a hard ball around if there's other people there that uh, want to do do something else. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Um, Jodie, do you want to come in on that one? Yeah, uh, the fence is made from, uh, I've just had it in front of me now, uh, I think it's galvanised coated steel and obviously it needs to be of a solid structure to stop the balls as they are hit towards it and um, as I said the location of the fencing and the heights is determined by the independent risk assessment and obviously the ball can go as you say anywhere but obviously the majority of the strongest shots will be in the direction of those fences and obviously they're the more likely shots to be the more powerful from the risk assessment and obviously from the studies they've done for that. And obviously that's dictated the heights and the positioning of those fences. And the dog leg fence is to protect the users of the path in that location because the path comes around the play area, which is located behind the nursery and then follows that dog leg. So that dog leg section is to protect the users of the path in that location. Was that all the questions answered? Sorry, Councillor Gallagher. 
Now, uh, could you just sort of talk me through the fact that this used to be used for cricket um, a long, long time ago, and that uh, now when I was there, you know, it was being used by a lot of people for all the other things that they like to do in the park. Um, how, how would it work that suddenly, you know, these people come in and take over that whole area and would really want, for logical reasons, everybody, uh, children included, moved away from the area? Um, is there a, a time when this is going to say this is now a cricket pitch and you can't, can't go and have your picnic there? Uh, obviously, the applicant is registered to talk, which is Bill Wyatt, who is the Parks Department, and may be able to answer better. But obviously, the users of the park, and at the present, cricket can be played within the park, obviously, as can other sports. Obviously, there's formal football pitches marked out. And obviously, the users of the park will need to establish, obviously, what's taking place formally or informally, and obviously, uh, arrange themselves around that. And obviously, that's something that would happen naturally and obviously wouldn't be something that could necessarily we could control as a, a planning department in that respect. But obviously, as I said, obviously Bill Wyatt may be able to answer as to how that occurs, because obviously that happens throughout parks within the borough. Obviously there's formal arrangements within our parks as there are informal, and obviously that seems to occur without needing too much managing, I would imagine, but obviously Bill may be able to answer that better than me. Thanks, Jody. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Jeff, what, can, I, can I just come in there? John, can you come back to this point when we have you to speak in a second? We've got, we've got a question from Councillor Garinger and then we'll, we will come to speakers after that. Um, Councillor Garinger, do you want to ask your question? Uh, yes, <clears throat> yes, please. Um, I noticed there are two cricket pitches. Um, will, they, will they have boundaries around them uh, so at least people know not to cross the boundary if there's a game on? And number two, I didn't spot, and maybe that's my fault, any 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 time or time of year situation. Now, I mean, obviously they don't play cricket sort of in the middle of the winter. Uh, you Obviously, it's light quite late this time of year, but it's dark much earlier other times of the year. So is, is there going to be some condition as to what times people can play cr cricket uh, and, and uh, what time of the year? Uh, they can they can play. Uh, Chair Jody Williams, Deputy Planning Manager. Um, in regards to the use, obviously the use can exist as existing. So obviously it's not something that would be necessarily new to the park or that we could control the hours or when that could be played. Obviously there are formal arrangements which would be made through the Parks Department for people to book those and obviously there'll be some control in that remit, remit, but obviously in terms of planning, obviously the use can exist as currently. I mean, to, in. Sorry, to, I mean, to be fair to the neighbours, I think they'd like to have some idea when, when cricket balls might be going over their fences, what, what time of year they're going to be careful and what time of year everything will be OK because they won't be playing. So it's it just, just a, a, a small thing for the people living around there just to have some idea you know uh, about time frames and uh, you know and, and maybe that I and mean, that's the sort of condition i might be looking for maybe we can't put it on for this but maybe someone else can put those conditions on on behalf of residents uh, chair just to respond to that obviously yeah. we i don't think we could condition the use of the artificial pictures because obviously they're within the park setting for the public to use obviously either informally uh, without any sort of pre-booking or there can be pre-booking arrangements which would be more formal and be made through the parks department on a weekly monthly or perhaps yearly basis and obviously there will be some form of control through the formal bookings but obviously the informal bookings it's not something we can control and as i said obviously the use is existing obviously people can turn up to that park and play cricket 11 aside or as a small family obviously COVID regulations permitting, obviously without the current restrictions which are in place, that could occur without any controls from the planning department. So for us, we don't feel we can add further conditions on the use, but obviously that's something that can be regulated through the formal bookings through the parks department. Could we ask them to, could we ask them to look at that? That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Okay, thank you, Councillor Garinger. Um, what 
we'll move on to now is some this item we did receive some written statements from residents um we take those as read because they were sent out and um, with a pack but do we have any questions from officers arising from those before we move on to speakers okay i'm not getting anything on the chat function so um, we'll move on um so the first um speaker we've got today we've got um the um, applicant um sorry the first person i hear from is um councillor um councillor david hicks who is the councillor for belmont ward where the overton park is um councillor hicks you've um if you're there you've got four minutes to address the committee i'll let you know when the four minutes are up okay uh, if you just want to can you, me, can, can you hear me okay yeah we've got you firstly i'd like to say the orig i originally supported this application because i thought it might develop the use of uh, overton park but feedback from residents has caused me concern about its impact upon the current park users and the residents. And I really ask the committee to consider that when looking at this application. I can summarise their concerns as follows. Formal cricket pitches have not existed at Overton Park for many years, and the users of the park and surrounding residents have got used to their absence. Cricket may be played, but it's informal. By proposing the installation of these two pitches, the council is modifying the long established usage pattern of the park. The park has become, as Councillor Gallagher said, an open area where families, children and joggers can move without fear of injury from flying objects, unless you consider footballs to be just dangerous. A cricket ball is potentially lethal, which is why ball stop fencing is being proposed in the application. But cricket balls pose a danger to unsuspecting visitors who may be playing in the park or taking exercise. I wonder if the danger would deter people from using the park. Residents in Holland Avenue and Pensant Way have reported incidents of cricket balls falling near children in their garden and have damaged the glass and other structures. The ball stop fences must be sufficient to prevent that. Uh, but it, it, the technical report says that it will not stop the freak shots. And that we're talking about amateurs playing cricket here. Signage will have to be clear enough to make visitors aware of the risks. We, what we don't need is one shot that results in a serious injury. Unfortunately, it's not clear from the proposals why there is a difference in height of ball stop fencing in views B and C, and whether the fences would adequately protect those using the jogging trail and the footpath to more way. Residents have mentioned the disturbance created by current and past cricket matches with loud noise, music, rubbish strewn in the parks, and players using the boundary fence as a toilet. Sometimes the disturbance has started as early as seven o'clock on a Sunday morning. The complainants disagree that this is an improvement to the park, questioning for whom. Uh, unlike football, cricket matches can be lengthy and occupy the park for several hours. There's concern about what time constraints and additions will be put upon the use of the pitches, what control will be put in place to ensure the usage of the pitches is authorized, managed and policed and does not cause nuisance to other park users. There is a need to improve the facilities at Open Park, but it must be done in a responsible way. That's why I'm asking you to consider the pros and cons carefully of this application. While it's there, I also ask Councillor Shields, as chairman of the local committee, to consider the release of funds to produce a comprehensive design plan for Overton Park. That's it. Great, thank you, Councillor. <laughs> If, if it's okay, um, you're breaking. Right. Sorry, I was going to say if you don't mind waiting there for a second, um, so yep. we can take questions from councillors if they have any. Before that, though, um, do officers want to um, come back on any of the points that are raised or clarify anything? Chair. Um, yeah. Andy Weber, Head of Planning. Uh, I don't think so. I think you're, you're going to hear from the applicant, and I think there's a lot of. Um, issues that have already come up this evening about you know the competition for use in the park and and you know the the adequacy of uh, safeguards for users of the park and people enjoying their um their gardens uh, adjacent to the site as well so um you've, you've heard what the officers have said in presentation and what's in the report i think we'll invite um mr wyatt to kind of expand a little bit on on what we've said already thank you okay thank you um councillor shields you have a question for councillor hicks or a comment yep i think i think um am i on yes um, 
yes, I, I, similar to Councillor Hicks, I was happy for this to come forward um, because obviously the formalised use of the park is, is, is of course a good thing. Councillor Hicks asked me if we could, as because I chair the local committee, whether we could consider funds to be brought forward to for a, a fundamental design plan for the whole park and i totally agree with him uh it will be a committee decision of course we're a democracy um but it certainly has my vote and, and my general agreement that something good and formal for the park so everyone can see what is planned how the park will evolve and how it will become more used by more members of the community of course because Sutton, like so many other boroughs, is growing in numbers and often with properties without open space or park. So my short answer to Councillor Hicks is yes, I agree with him. Um, I would also sort of throw it open to the planning officers what our options are to review this. Should there be an accident or should there be uh, a, a groundswell of concern from residents over the activity of, of cricket in the park? I think the, the worry is at, at busy times. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shields. I'll ask officers um, if they want to come in or whether we want to just wait for a response to that from the applicant next. Yes, uh, sorry, um, Andy Weber, Head of Planning. Um, I think obviously the application um, is recommended for approval this evening. Are you going to hear from the... the um, the the applicant shortly i think if there's anything that comes out of um further questions and, and debate in terms of uh, any concerns members have uh, about this proposal going forward and whether or not there's any further mitigation that can be considered um, then that's probably something we can return to in debate okay thank you um do we have any questions any other questions for councillor hicks before we move on to the applicant Okay, right, okay, so what we'll do now is um, move on to Bill Wyatt, who is the applicant for this um, application. Um, I don't know if you, are you still on the call, Bill? Yes, I am, yeah. yeah. So um, same as Councillor Hicks, you've got four minutes to address the committee, and if you can probably spend some of that time addressing some of the issues that have raised already, it might save us some time on questions later. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you to Councillor Hicks for, for raising some of the questions as well. Um, just to put a bit of a background to this, um, we're looking to install five of these pitches um, across a number of sites this year, um, and they're funded through the London Cricket Trust, which is an organisation set up on behalf of, I'm going to try and get this right, Middlesex, Essex, Surrey and Kent Cricket Clubs, um, providing funding for um, sites across London. Uh, sorry, yeah, across London, um, to encourage um, a number of, of ways into cricket, to try and inc increase cricket take-up, if you like, um, through things like games like Last, Last Man Standing, um, youth cricket, which they're trying at the moment to, to reconfigure so the teams will be slightly smaller, which will um, require additional pitches. But also recognising the fact that we've got, um, as they've explained to me, teams in Sutton that are now playing in Merton because of lack of facilities. Um, and also local teams that are looking for more, more places to play. They're also combining this, um, the funding for this with um, outreach through Surrey, working with local clubs and a number of local schools to try and encourage um, sport and physical activity among young people, both um, boys and girls um, throughout the borough. Um, so, so hopefully it's a concerted attempt to increase uh, uptake of phys physical activity in the, in the, the borough. Um, just to move on some of the points quickly, because I know I've not got a huge amount of time. Um, how would we deal with other people trying to be on, on the, the pitch at the same time? To be honest, this is a perennial problem uh, working in parks. Um, we have baseball in parks. We've had cricket um, over the years. We have football throughout the winter. Um, people tend to rub along quite well within our parks. Um, obviously, from time to time, there are conflicts, but it's not something that was, was a massive issue in the, in the past. I don't expect it to be a big issue in the future. Um, we might have to see how that goes. It's a large site. Um, there's probably a, a further two and a half hectares of space outside of, of the cricket um, for people to use if both were being used at the same time. Um, one councillor asked about marking the boundary. Um, yeah, for official games, we would expect to see a boundary marked. Um, so that would be the responsibility of our, our grounds maintenance contractor, not only to manage the bookings on our behalf, but also to make sure the pitches are marked. Um, 
when booked and by whom. Um, most likely um, school teams, youth teams, um, pretty much as, as cricket was in the past. So we can set the times for that um, and we can look into that if, if there are specific issues around teams playing particularly late. I think we could, we could come back to that if we needed to. What time of year? Um, predominantly summer. Um, I mean, I've heard these called all weather pitches. They're not. They're non-turf pitches. And the, the, the main reason for a non-turf pitch is to give a, give a true surface. Um, it became increasingly difficult over the years to provide um, a true surface to a cricket wicket in a, in a public park setting when people will picnic on it or play football on it or whatever they do when it's out of use. Um, and that was partly the reason for some of the decline of, of cricket across parks all across London, really. So it provides a solid and a true pitch um, whenever you turn up to play. So it's, it's really for, for summer use. It's not, it's not an all-weather facility particularly. Um, so talk about youth cricket. Um, just just to, to come back, I, I, a mention was made of the height of the fences. Um, the, the fences are at varying heights depending on, on their proximity to the wicket itself. So some of them are as, as high as three and a half metres um, and the fence by the, um, the car park is 1.2. So that's based on uh, the trajectory and the, and the distance expected to be hit by a ball. Um, and on this site, we did ask for that because we knew that the, the, um, the fences were a bit tighter than they are on some of our other sites. Um, and so that those bits of fencing that you can see on the pitch should deal with all but the, the most um, hard, hard of shots. And bearing in mind, this is for, for youth cricket. Um, it was felt that that was fairly unlikely to go past that. Um, and someone asked about a review of this should should um, things happen, and I think that would be through the um, E and N committee chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, that's perfect. That's great. Thank you, and thanks for covering some of the questions that have been asked. Um, I know earlier on in the um, meeting, Councillor Haldane had a question um, that she wanted to ask with the applicant. So I'm going to start with Councillor Haldane. Um, if she wants to join in. Thank you. Yes, it's a bit convoluted, but if you'll bear with me. Um, but we mentioned baseball, cricket, football um, facilities that are in our parks in Sutton. There's also lots of basketball um, playing facilities. Um, and you mentioned, um, you know, whom would be using this, these facility, this facility if it was to be granted. Um, and it, it would be being used by men and boys predominantly rather than by women and girls. Um, cricket is a very male dominated sport. You did mention that um, you wanted to increase um, female participation in your introduction, which I, I welcome. Um, but so much space in the park being taken up to be used predominantly by men and boys. Um, I, I don't know how you feel about that, if you've really thought about it. I don't mean that in an offensive way at all. Um, how much do we look at um, gender within our town planning policies? Um, I know that we're not supposed to be funding sport due to council current council policy, which I think is a shame. Um, but, you know, should we be funding a large area of our park being taken up by what will end up only being used by men and boys? Uh, kind of an open question um, and you know, not really directed at you, but this this was my opportunity to say it, so. Okay, thank you, Councillor Alvin. Um, Bill, I don't know if you want to come back on that aspect of policy for sporting parks and whether that's something we have considered. Um, certainly as far as the, the funding body are concerned, um, they're looking to, to promote um, sport for boys and girls, so men and women's sport. There's, there's no quarter given, I don't think, as far as they're concerned. Um, and we would encourage the same. Um, what we are doing is, as a park service is we're pursuing um, external funding to provide good quality, long-term, sustainable um, facilities wherever and whenever we can. Um, and the, the park service will be producing um, a plan pitch strategy um, for the borough in the next year to um to further seek external funding to, to improve facilities for any sport across the borough um so it, it's not our aim to, to provide for um, one gender over another yeah i don't think it is but i i can't see anything that's um convinced me that you would get a 50 50 split it is mostly going to be used 
by men and boys. Um, and, and it's space that therefore women and girls are no longer going to be able to use. Well, thank you. I think that might be something you want to come back to in the debate. Uh, I think we've got a, um, an answer to the, the technical question there in terms of our policy, but feel free to come back to it in debate. Um, Councillor Burke, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm coming back to these fences again because they puzzle me. They're only four foot high on that left hand side running down by the, the houses. And I know there's uh, there's stats, um, uh, equi uh, fitness equipment. Are they protecting the people using the fitness equipment? Because there's a number of stands. There's a trim track as you, you go around that park. Um, so that, that's the first question why they're there. And why is it the other thing is if we, we've got five of these things going in why we've we got two in one park because again i'm i'm a bit concerned about the use of all that space for two cricket pitches and it just seemed uh, a little bit greedy why not just have one and um you know because cricket is is a sport that not a lot of people take part in as far as i'm concerned it's not as popular as other sports uh, i'm happy to see one it takes up a huge amount of space for this for the amount of people involved as well and uh, I just wonder why why we put two in one park. Okay, thank you. Um, Bill, do you want to come in on that one? Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is sort of following a long conversation with um, the um, London Cricket Trust, looking at various sites across the borough, and, and it was felt that it was a site where, in fact, where those those two wickets are is where the two existing wickets were um, and where we could have carried on um, booking out grass cricket if you like um, and it lent itself quite well to, to two pitches um, two of the other sites that we're looking at um, haven't really got the space for, for two pitches and um, we're hoping to, to um, work with the, the cricket trust to perhaps increase onto other sites across the borough next year if this works okay okay thank you and the um, fences. Sorry, could I just? I'm, I am concerned about people using that trim track, and and it, it, are they protected? Sorry, chair. Just yeah, to come in on that. So I mean, as there is trim track along that side. Um, I'm, I've got a feeling that fence comes just to this side of of the trim track. In effect, if there was cricket going on, then then you would be able to see what was going on. Um, obviously, we'd expect people to be outside of the boundary if that was happening. Uh, we tried to move these fences so they deal with the fact that people are running along there. So there's, there's a desire line where people jog around the outside. So we brought it in inside of that as well. Um, the fence along the northwest side, I think it's, it's not, I think it's three and a half metres at that point. I would have to check. Um, but it's certainly higher than, than, than we said previously. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Geiringer has a question as well. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, as a former sort of councillor in Belmont and having being a Belmont person myself, maybe might you be encouraging a Belmont cricket club to uh, partake there and uh, see where it goes? Hello. Is that, is that for me, Chair? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, that the. Um, the outreach workers from Surrey are looking to work with, with local clubs and local schools. So I think they're looking to expand what's their existing, but I certainly don't think they would turn down the chance of a, of a new club. Maybe that's something that Tony Shields could look at uh, because he's looking at the, the whole area there. Yeah, th thank you, Councillor Garringer. I think um, there are some things we can do tonight in terms of the planning, and then obviously there might be a separate piece of work um, that the local committee might want to look at, but I don't want to tie their hands by making any decisions on their behalf tonight. But I think they're, that's very sensible and interesting. And as someone who lives in Belmont, um, I might give cricket a go. Um, do we have any other questions um, for Bill at this point? Um, Councillor Hicks raised something earlier on about um, signage and um, the management of the site. But if you... Have you thought about how this is going to be signposted? I know you said if there was a, a formal match, there'd be boundaries and things set up. But apart from that, are there plans for making sure it's going to be clear that people need to watch out for flying goal, um, cricket balls? 
Um, we hadn't intended to put more signage up in the in the uh, park chair. Um, we try to avoid too much signage in parks because it just becomes clutter and people tend to ignore it. Um, I would like to think that if a group of people that turned up in um, sports outfits in the middle of a pitch like that, then people would notice that, that um, cricket was going to be played. Um, but obviously we'll, we'll take advice from local ward councillors as, as, as things go on, if, if it becomes apparent that that's an issue. OK, thank you. Um, and I think also one thing that hasn't been raised um, in questions that was raised earlier is about similar to what you were just talking about. If things change and we find out that, for example, the fences don't give as much protection as we were hoping for, or there are, um, or the plans that we've got don't fit 100%, are there, is there scope for any amendments to this in the future? Thank you, Chair. I mean, I, th I think where where public safety is concerned, if if the um, if things change and it becomes apparent that there's an issue, then certainly we would we would risk assess that and take appropriate action every time. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to double check the chat again. If unless there are any other questions, I'm going to suggest we move into debate. Is there anyone who wants to kick us off? Can I come in on Councillor Haldane's point about women cricket? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. before you do, I've just got, um, count, um, I think Councillor Galligan's asked for another question. So can I just take his question and then come back to you? I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, we're into debate, yeah? Oh, no, sorry, you, you said you had a question. Oh, or sorry. Or you want to debate? Y yeah, are we into debate? Oh, no, Councillor Foster first, because he's... Oh, okay. So, okay, so Councillor Foster, do you want to start us off and I'll go back to Councillor Galligan? It's just the fact that this is a development uh, position and just taking Councillor Haldane's point, the England and Wales Cricket Board of investing £20 million in the next two years in women's cricket, 50, 50 million over five years. So while, whilst women's cricket may be behind men's cricket at the moment, the investment of the England and Wales Cricket Board in women's cricket is substantial. And I think it is wrong to view this as negative because there is some form of sexist uh, bias. Um, anything that encourages sport and organised sport gets uh, kids off the streets. And I would support this entirely. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Councillor Galligan, do you want to raise yeah. your point? Um, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm just not very sure about it. Uh, I still feel, OK, there's been a risk assessment done, but I just kind of think it's an area that families will be there with small children. Um, we know how difficult it is to say to a small child, don't go there. It usually makes them want to go there. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure that it's a really great idea, to be honest with you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Burke, wants to come in? Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm going to support it. I, I, I understand the concerns. Uh, and I think I share some of them. But on the whole, I think it's a good thing. It's, uh, it, it's good to um, encourage sport. Uh, it's good to have this type of facility. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, Oddly, I, I agree with Councillor Haldane and, and with uh, Councillor Foster. I think it's um, it's perhaps not a sport that attracts women greatly, but I think efforts have been made to change that. And um, I, I think if you haven't got it there, then women can't play it and men can't play it either. So I'll, I'll be supporting it. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Clare? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to say I, I found Councillor Haldane's points very interesting and quite compelling I think I hope that she might be proven wrong but I suspect that she might not um, and I think there's a broader question there for the council in terms of policy about sort of uh, providing sports space that appeals to everyone but I think for me personally from the planning aspects of this I'm not seeing any compelling reasons not to support it um, I'd be interested to hear if people think there is kind of very specific planning grounds. Uh, thank you, Councillor Clare. Um, I see Councillor Garinger's 
um, ask to ask a question. Before I do that, um, I said I'd give Council Haldane an opportunity to join the debate to come in if she wanted to add anything from before. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, thank you for allowing me to um, the the um, chance to make those points. Um, it's it's not something that we talk about a lot, um, and this is this is quite a, a clear example where what looks like half the park is going to get taken up by something which will be used, let's be honest, mostly by men and, and boys. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have it, but um, I'm glad I was given the opportunity to um, to draw everyone's attention to it. Um, I, I, I would like to see more sports facilities in our parks. I, I would just like for some of them to be um, likely to be used by people like me. <laughs> um, so thanks for letting me uh, say all of that and for, for you all joining in and um, and taking those points on board um, and just to say uh, what I wrote in the chat which is that um, I don't disagree with what Tim said um, perhaps it would be easy to say I agree with what Tim said um, I just can't see anything in the report that convinces me that enough of that money will be spent in Sutton to make sure that half of cricket facility is used by women and girls. It's a larger issue than we can resolve this evening, obviously. Thank you, Councillor Alvey. Um, Councillor Gowing, you had a question. Is that directed at officers or is it just a comment as part of the debate? I'm trying to, um, oh, here we go. Yeah, there you go. I, <laughs> I, tried, I was trying to uh, unmute myself. Um, okay, now I agree with what's been said. I think it should be a, a unisex cricket club, uh, <laughs> just just as much as for for men and men and women and boys and girls. Uh, I, that should be encouraged. Uh, you know, women's cricket has taken off, just like women's football has in the last few years. So we should be encouraging it completely. So I, I'm I'm with the others on on that. Uh, so I, 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 w I would like to see it happen, but you know, uh, we need to look at the times, uh, how the pictures are marked out, and uh, you know, if we can get some cricket club, men's and women's cricket club, that that that'd be absolutely great. But I understand, as I said earlier, that uh, Councillor Shields and his area committee will be looking at the whole area, and maybe we can look at something sort of comprehensive that that covers this as well. But I'm I'm very much in 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 favour of it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Garinger. Um, we'll go to Councillor Allen, then um, Councillor Shields, and then I think we've covered quite a lot of the, the points in debate, so I'll move to the vote after that. So, Councillor Allen, do you want to come in? Yes, I'm just, as Councillor Haldane was talking, I was reminded of um, Rachel Hayhoff-Wint, <clears throat> or should I say Baroness Hayhoff-Wint, who was the English ladies cricket captain from 1966 to 1978, and it was unbeaten in six test matches. Um, oh, oh, oh. Cricket is not just a, a male support, male sport. It is all very well uh, represented in this country by ladies as well. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I think we need to be careful not to, um, I don't think Councillor Haldane was saying at any point that only men play cricket, but I think um, we do have, and, but I take your point on board. Um, Councillor Shields, do you want to um, comment and then we'll um, move to the panel? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I, I think it adds to the to, to the complement of the park. I mean, there are two football pitches there all through the winter season, um, whether that's played by men or women. Um, the football pitches are there and used. I use the park regularly. Um, and it really is men and women, young and old, are kicking balls up against the goals in and out of formal actual play. We have benches that have been put in for specifically for people in wheelchairs so they can sit with their carers or their, their friends and sit on a, a mud-free environment. Um, we've increased the playground by 50%. We've got trees planted. We've got table tennis tables. What we're trying to do is make this park somewhere where people want to go because I, I really believe empty parks cause problems when the good guys are in the parks the bad guys aren't comfortable and i like to see participation and usage of the park so i will be supporting this application 
Yeah, thank you, Councillor Shields. I, I just want to say that I agree with you. I think that um, parks are parks and open spaces are great ways for the community to um, get access to green space. But I think it's always better when they're active spaces and where we can make the most of the space that we've got in the borough for residents. So um, thank you for making that point. Um, we're going to move to the vote now. Um, Cathy, can you move through um, an alphabetical um, roll call and take the vote for this item, please? Okay, again, if we could vote for, against, or abstain. Uh, Councillor Eric Allen. Four. Councillor Richard Clare. Four. Councillor Tim Foster. I'm four. Councillor Vincent Galligan. Uh, abstain. Councillor Peter Geringer. Four. Councillor Amy Haldane. Four. Councillor Tony Shields. Four. Councillor Chris Williams. Four. Councillor Kevin Burke. Four. Councillor Drew Heffernan. Four. That's nine votes for and one abstention. Okay, thank you very much. So that item is carried and that application is approved. Um, we've now moved on to item number seven which is an application for St. James Road. Um, we've got quite a few um, people who want to speak on this. We've got an, an applicant, an objector, and someone in favour. But as the residents, we want to, if that's okay, take a few minutes break so we can get them on signed up properly. So if we can be back in five minutes, I've got the time as 21 minutes past nine. So if we go back for, um, let's say 26 minutes past, um, or 25 past, um, that'd be great. Thank you.
Okay, thank you everyone. Um, and welcome back to the committee. As I said, we're now going to move on to item um, number seven, which is 56 St. James Road in Carshalton. Now, um, we've now got um, our registered speakers on the line. Um, for their benefit, just so they know what the um, what will happen next, what's going to happen is officers will give a presentation um, on the item, and then councillors will have an opportunity to ask questions of the, council, of the um, officers. Then once that's done, um, we've received some written statements on this item as well, so um, we'll take any questions on those. And then I'll ask um, residents to come in one at a time, and I'll let you know when to come in. And at that point, you'll have four minutes to address the committee. Um, I'll time that and let you know when that's over. And if you can stay on and then listen to any questions from councillors at that point, that would be really helpful. Um, and then you're free to go and we'll um, debate the item and take a vote. Um, so what I'll ask now is for um, Katie Johnson to um, give us a presentation on this item. Thank you, Chair. Firstly, um, I would just like to table amendment to the reason for refusal. It should read the proposed boundary treatment fronting St. James Road and St. John's Road, not St. Andrew's Road. The application, <clears throat> sorry, the application site comprises an industrial unit located at the junction of St. James's Road and St. John's Road within the St. John's Road area of special local character. The immediate area is residential in character, comprising two-storey Victorian dwellings. To the northwest of the site is Plumpton Way industrial area, and here is the new built um, cell, um, kind of access cell storage building. This is a photograph of the site, um, looking at it from St. James's Road. This is a photograph of the site looking along St. John's Road. Planning permission is sought for the erection of a two metre high palisade fence along the boundary of the site. The current proposal follows enforcement proceedings to remove a palisade fence seen in these photographs. The enforcement notice was complied with and the fencing was removed. The current proposal seeks permission for a similar fence, albeit painted green. In this case, planning permission is recommended for refusal on the grounds that the fence would result in an overly dominant and incongruous feature that would fail to preserve and enhance the character of the area. The site is located in the St John's Road area of special local character, which is characterised by Victorian terraced houses with small front gardens. The general character of boundary treatments in the ASLC is low brick or timber boundary walls and fences. Examples of other palisade fencing provided by the applicant are located within the industrial areas, which is sat outside of the ASLC. This is where you would typically find palisade fencing. You wouldn't necessarily find it in the residential areas. It is for these reasons and those outlined in the committee report, it is recommended that planning permission be refused subject to the amended reason for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Katie. Do we have any questions from councillors um, on the item? If you can just yeah, let us know. Yes, well, uh, Councillor Garringer, no photos. I haven't seen any photos come up. Okay, we've. I can see them on here. Perhaps is. Um, Matthew's still on the call, can, can perhaps email them to you, if you have them. Um, if not, I um, might need to take some um, <clears throat> guidance on whether... I had them on previous items, I don't know why I haven't got them now. Okay. I've just got a K in a blue ring. Oh, that was that was Katie. Try... Um, can we get someone to help Councillor Gowringer uh, access the photos? Um, so you could try and change the layout settings, um, I've been told. Um, what we'll do is, while we're trying to get that to happen, maybe if Katie can stop presenting, then start presenting again, and then have a look if the photos come up. Before then, should we just get some questions from Councillor Shields, who's asked to ask a question first? Hi. Um, I've actually managed to get the phone, the pictures in the presentation this time round. It's, it's, it's a bit of a lucky draw. Um, the building that it's against, i.e. the backdrop, looks heavy-duty commercial. 
Um, is this fencing, now it is envisaged in green, not too incongruous considering the commercial background and the setting that it's in? Um, what I'd also like to see is some views from the ASLC to see how it detracts from an ASLC. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Katie, is, do you have a... Um, yes, so the, the industrial, it is it is an industrial building, but it, the industrial building itself is set within the ASLC. Um, have I just... So this is the industrial building here, and obviously this is the red line of the ASLC. So the, so the building is set within the ASLC. The, um, I suppose the only photographs, um, I'll just go back to the presentation, just see. Um, I, mean, these, I mean, these photographs showing the fence that was removed um, were taken from inside the ASLC, and you can see from this photograph, the property here, this is the kind of the standard buildings that are in the ASLC. This is the character of the ASLC. This building is a slight anomaly, I think, within the ASLC. The majority of these two-storey Victor Victorian dwelling houses, which is what is the character of the ASLC. So we believe having a palisade fence in this location, as it's not in an industrial area and it is in more of a residential setting, would be is, un is unacceptable. Uh, can I go further then, Chair? Um, yeah, sure. As this is an industrial building within an ASLC, it must have had it must have a, 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 some words of descriptions to uh, ameliorate its it, its incongruous nature. Um, how is this how is this listed within the ASLC setting? The ASLC description um, only really refers to the Victorian two-storey dwellings with small front gardens. It, it's a, quite a short description, and that is what the description of the ASLC is in the in the um, Sutton local plan. So the area of special loca local character does not note this building as as anomalous within its no. within its. Okay, um, I suppose as the the. Uh, the, the building hasn't got green railings around it. Um, what actually is or would be, I mean, obviously, with, with an industrial building, you have the requirement for security. I, I can't imagine the applicants putting this up for the love of it. Um, what, you know, what olive branch do we offer? Okay, so um, what, in the presentation, and I'll just flip to the end, the, here are a uh, a couple of examples of railings within the ASLC. Both these buildings um, are located towards the end of St. John's Road and St. James's Road. And we believe that something similar to this may be more um, appropriate in the ASLC. Okay, you, you've actually hit on exactly the sort of thing I, I was thinking of having an ASLC in, in the ward I represent. Obviously, we want to keep you know, style, context and character. But obviously security, well, I say obviously, I don't know, but I would imagine security is the driving force for this application in itself. Okay, th thank you, Katie. It's very helpful. Thank you, Councillor Shields. And we do have the applicant um, who will be speaking later, so you can ask him about the the main function. Um, Councillor Haldane, you have a question of officers? Thank you. Yeah, I think I um, got quite a lot of it from... Councillor Shields questions so thank you but I just wanted to check that I understand correctly there was a fence that was removed there's now an application for a new fence but we don't think this is acceptable either and it's because of the design but we're not anti a fence Yes, that's correct. So if you can see the photograph that's on the presentation now, this was this fence was installed without the benefit of planning permission. An enforcement notice was served for its removal due to the fact that the design was considered unacceptable. Um, the fence was removed. I, I think I'm right, and the applicant may be able to clarify this, but I think they they didn't appeal the enforcement notice in time, so the, the enforcement notice took effect and therefore they had to remove the fence. So therefore now come back in with a planning application to erect a similar fence, albeit painted green. And we are not saying that they can't install some mm. sort of railings, it's just we would prefer to see a different design. Uh, but the new design hasn't yet been erected? 
No. So at the moment, um, I think it's you can see from this photo green fences. Just an example. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so the photograph that you, I hope you can see now, you can see that there's no fencing around the boundary of the site. Yes. Um, yeah. So their intention is to um, put this. This is the the planning application for this for this fence. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and thank you, Katie. Um, Councillor Allen. Yes, I think uh, the question I was going to ask has basically been answered, but. Um, it does state in the papers that uh, similar uh, fencing has been installed around the doctor's surgery, uh, Smith fencing, and the uh, the storage unit. Uh, and I think the, the point which has been made is that you, the um, planning permission in relation to a fence is, is not being rejected. It's purely the design of this particular fence, which is not acceptable. Is that correct? Sorry, yes, the um, the fencing that was installed was yeah was unacceptable. The the fence into the doctor surgery and um, the self storage unit is is in a is, is you know is a different location. It's fronting onto the the main. I think it's Ride Lane. I think, and it's not within the ASLC. So I think that's why we we feel in this location Palisade fencing is not uh, appropriate. Yes, but the, the type of fencing which you showed the. Um the picture of with the, the wall and the, the metal railings above uh, probably would be acceptable. Um, we think it would be more acceptable, yes. I'll just find them again. But yes, something similar to this we think would be more acceptable in this location. Okay. Thank you. Um, I can't see anyone else who um, has a question at this point. Um, what I'd like to do now is move to the written statements and again take these as read because they've been circulated. Um, are there any questions arising from those that uh, uh, members want to ask of officers? And I'll just give 10 seconds or so to wait and see. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's a written statements concluded. Um, we now move to the point where we have our registered speakers. Um, now, we're going to start off, we've got two registered speakers here today. We've got um, Rizwan Shabir, who's the applicant, and then Albina Zakhan, who's writing, who will be referred to as a supporter, but what she's supporting is the officer's recommendation to refuse. So even though she's a supporter for the minute, she's against the application, if that makes sense. Um, so we're going to start off hearing from, um, from Ms Zakhan. Um, Mr. Sakan, who's on the call. Um, Mr. Sakan, are you there? Hello. Hiya. Um, so um, we're going to, um, what's going to happen now is we're going to give you um, four minutes to um, tell us um, what you've got prepared. And then if it's okay, we'll have councillors ask you a few questions if that's all right. Yep, absolutely. Oh, fantastic. So um, feel free to start whenever you'd like. Okay, so I'd like to say good evening to everyone. So I know it's been quite a long evening. Um, so I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak. And I'm going to keep it very brief. So uh, I'll go straight into uh, the points that I wanted to make. And actually, the very first one is uh, something that hasn't man been mentioned in the uh, application. And it's about the change in uh, the boundary of the fence. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see the photographs um, of the boundary uh, in 2018 versus 2016. Would you be able to confirm that? I think if you just carry on, we'll, officers can respond to that later if we've got that available. Okay, so uh, you see, as you can probably see on uh, the pho photographs, given uh, the proximity of our property, so 54 and 56, historically the two meter fence was laid away from uh, the doorstep of our house, but in 2018 it has actually uh, been moved right to the edge of the property, and actually we felt that due to the height and aesthetics of um, the fence, it actually created a very intrusive and unwelcoming look uh, to our area. Um, so I'd like to kind of um, be very clear about the fact that, as um, been mentioned before, uh, that we're not against the idea of having the two meter fence and we completely empathize with the needs of our neighbor to keep 
uh, his property protected. We do, however, feel that um, a compromise could be achieved by keeping the fence uh, as per the original boundary that was there pre-2018 and introduce a new fence in the alleyway, which actually uh, was uh, discussed probably uh, about four years ago when we just moved in into the property. So we feel that this solution would still provide the uh, protection to the property along the perimeter, which is what I think the applicant is looking for, but will solve um, this kind of, I guess, intrusive nature of the fence. And I think uh, one of the other things is important to consider as well, given the circumstances that we're all in at the moment with COVID-19, our house is where we spend all of our time. And I think it's important not to underestimate the role of our homes and neighborhoods that play a role in our mental well-being you know, as a society and individuals. So that's all the points that I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for, for that and for coming to see us. Um, I'm going to ask officers, first of all, to um, respond to any points that they want to raise, and I'll ask councillors um, if they have any questions. So, off, um, both Katie, if you want to respond to any of that, particularly uh, the question around the boundary. So I don't think that's yeah, yeah, first, yeah. yeah, whilst Kate, Chair, it's Andy Webber, head planning. Before yeah. Katie responds to that, can I? we just ask the, the um, support, sorry, the support a stroke objector to clarify um, the point that she's making about the comparison photographs so we can see if we've got anything to show on that. Yeah, so uh, there were two photographs applied and one was from 2016. That was um, the source of the photograph. It's the uh, Zoopla uh, property listing. So you can clearly see where the original um, two meter uh, fence post was uh, in relation to our property, to the in relation to 54 and uh, where it has then been moved in 2018 with, where the uh, metal, the new metal uh, fence was um, installed. So um, I don't, so uh, Chair, sorry, sorry, yes. um, Andy Webber, Head of Planning. Um, I don't think we have the um, 2016 photograph. Um, uh, it's mentioned it's from Zoopla, so uh, we wouldn't have that unless it's our own photograph. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what the, um, what the, the 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 specific point that's being made here um if it's a question of the positioning of, of the fence um that's that, that's probably a separate issue um because this evening we're only really considering the appearance uh of the fence as proposed um i wasn't aware there was any issues at all about whether the fence was or was not in the correct position which i'm not sure but i i think that might be the point that the um uh, supporter is Andy, so I think you've dropped out there. Sorry, Chair. Can you can you everyone hear me now? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I I, I finished what I was saying. That was just really I'm not clear as to whether the supporter was making a comment about the um the the position or whether it was a dispute over the position of the fence line, which is what I kind of uh, gleaned from that um that 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 statement um because that's not something that we were aware of was an issue um and, until this evening that is indeed the point okay thank you um what would i might take um any questions from councillors um at the moment and then maybe the um object slash supporter can um just clarify if it is the positioning of the fence that she meant uh, do we have any questions from any councillors Okay, no, I think that's fine. Um, so, um, Mr. Khan, Mr. Khan, sorry, um, can you just just so we're one hundred percent clear? Are you saying that there was a, it was the fence itself was in a different um, position initially, and that's the issue that you were raising? Yes, that was actually, uh, one of the things that was raised uh, in uh, the complaint. Uh, in 2018, when the uh, new fence was raised, uh, so this has been communicated to uh, the council. Uh, okay. I think uh, the photographs that were supplied um, uh, yesterday uh, had examples of how the fence uh, would look like again when it raised again uh, from 
our point of view. So when uh, you're entering our property rather than 56, and it's and it's very close proximity to to our doorstep. Okay, thank you. Um, we do actually have we have a question from uh, Councillor Geiringer um, for you. Um, so if you can listen to that on Councillor Geiringer. Yeah, I'm, I'm around. Yeah, it's very difficult for me here because I, I've seen no photographs whatsoever. Um, what I see on the agenda is a pretty awful looking fence, which uh, will look absolutely awful uh, in an area of special local character and an area of like, um, archaeological interest. Um, but obviously, if if one could have a, a fence that's attractive uh, and, and looks nice and, and fits in, I, I wouldn't object to it. Um, but it's very difficult sitting here without any photographs. And, and I'm making the suggestion that in future we should have uh, these sort of meetings. We should have photographs sent to us with the agenda. Uh, that, that, that will mean that at least I've got photographs to look at as opposed to a screen just with a K on it. Sure. OK, no, thank you, Councillor Gowing. We'll take that as a the comment. And when it comes to the vote, you um, I, I imagine the same guidance will... Um, come into play if, the same as if you dropped out that you need to make a decision if you've to whether you've had enough information to make um a vote on it otherwise um you might want to abstain on the vote but that's a question for you at the end um okay i think that's it from so um thank you to um mr zakan uh, i don't think we have any other questions so thank you for your time um what we'll move on to now is the applicant um so that is Mr. Shabir, um, are you are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hi there. And um, the same um, thing applies as before. So what we've got is a four minute. Um, we'll set on a timer for you to address the committee, and then if you can stay on the line, so we, if any members of the committee have questions for you, um, you can answer them. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, sure, oh yeah. Thank you. Um, jump to uh, begin whenever you'd like, and I'll start the timer. Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, thank you to all the respective councillors uh, who have given me the opportunity to speak today and be on here. Um, I, I had something, uh, all the notes written out, but I think I'll concentrate to and uh, answer to some of the uh, things raised in the last few minutes. Um, this fencing issue has been going on for several years now, and uh, you know there's a lot of things that's been going backwards and forwards with the councillors, um, the few local ones, with MPs. Previously, we had to uh, Tom Brake involved. Um, we've got uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, MP Elliot involved as well now, and you know from day one it's just been so difficult to deal with the uh, council. It's just been uh, such hostility from the council that it's been unbelievable. Um, some of these things which have not come out before have come out today, which we've never heard of before. So we haven't had a chance to address them. Um, so if, if all the previous points that they've been taking up uh, all these years. I've kind of written out how I'm going to address those, but the points that have been highlighted now in the last 10 minutes or so are completely different to what this uh, whole application has been about over the last few years. Now, the ASL thing that the lady mentioned, um, if she can just bring that map up again, I just want to clarify that there are a few industrial um, uh, units which are which come inside that, which are just opposite to, our, to the rear of our um, unit. Um, they have palisade, um, and not having the photos here, that's unfair. Likewise, where the big gas station used to be, so if you're, if you're looking at the front where that green fencing is, if you look to the left, you would clearly see the palisade fencing from here. So I, I don't think the angles of this uh, have been shown uh, correctly. Um, I want to go back to the point that the neighbour is mentioning about this new boundary thing, the boundary uh, where the fence has been made has never been an issue. And I just want to clarify for the uh, councillors who are listening, uh, we had given uh, unrestricted access to number 54 to use our property. If you see the boundary lines, they we had given them free access to use that property uh, to that access way, which they're claiming now um, where the fence has been built. But the reason we built on that is because that fence had been broken for many years. Um, so now that we are fixing it for security purposes, it's only correct that we cover up our boundary. If the previous boundary uh, had been broken in several places um, and we're getting around to fixing it, obviously we're going to address that issue. And just for our neighbours' sake, for their convenience, we added we added an extra 
a gate in there. Um, and it's it's very <laughs> upsetting to see that they are being difficult about this um, when we've given them an extra gate for the, for the access. What they're suggesting is that we push our boundary back, which will um, we will lose our security, which is pretty much needed for our site. We have over a hundred thousand pounds of goods in there. We are an online retailer. Um, you, you know, think stuff is coming in and out. Um, we, we need security because it's a high security site. We've had break-ins, um, uh, or, or like a few break-ins, attempted break-ins. The last break-in we had, they just parked outside and walked straight in into the warehouse and stole the goods. Now, we can't ignore that this is a warehouse. We've paid money for it as a warehouse. We're using it as a warehouse. It has A2 use, it has B, uh, sorry, B2 use, B8 use, and it's been around for 60 years with this fencing, which is over two meters height. Now, after everything that's been said, I know it comes down to like or dislike of the fencing, but like and dislike is subjective to the person looking at it. Now, I can assure you that 99% of my neighbors I can promise you, I'm, I'm an honest person. They've come up to me and said, we like the fence that you've done, uh, and thank you for sorting this mess out. Um, and the problem is, which the council is kind of not being honest about is, the number 58 is a council worker who actually used to work in the planning department, Mr. Gavin Kalto. And he has been making life extremely difficult for us um, from the time he moved in, uh, roughly two years ago. Uh, he is the only one who's teamed up with number 54 um, to make life as maximum difficult for us as possible. We've tried to have these consultations where what would the council want, what would the council be happy with. They haven't come back with anything. Some of the stuff they've mentioned is, why don't you... So thank you, sir. Like, um, four minutes is... Um, so that's your four minutes. Thank you for... Um, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to... Before we move on to councillor questions, we're going to go to officers first, if that's OK. So um, Mr Weber wants to come in. Yes, um, Mr. Shabir, um, of course, we've had correspondence about the very allegation that you've made that a member of my staff has had undue influence in this process. Uh, and we wrote to you back in March, I believe, on this um, as part of a stage one complaint and said there's no case to answer. You haven't taken it to stage two complaint, so I'm quite surprised uh, that you're raising this again in a public forum this evening. Uh, Mr. No, Cal Mr. Mr. No, can I finish? No. And I finish what I'm saying. Mr. Calthorpe, as a resident of the borough, is perfectly entitled to raise objections to planning applications that affect him. And the application is coming before planning committee. So your allegation that there's any wrongdoing on behalf of the planning service and Mr. Calthorpe in, in particular um, can be put to one side because it will be the councillors who will be making a decision on this application and no officers. So I, I do, Chair, I feel very strongly that that point needs uh, correcting publicly. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Jameer, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I've got quite a lot of councillors that want to ask you questions. Um, so I'm going to go to them. Yeah, but sorry, is, is it, Mr. Adi just asked me a question because the stage two email was sent to him and he said because of the COVID, we can extend it by another two months. So that is still pending and ongoing. So okay. I'd like to clarify that. Did okay. Mr. Andy Webber get my email about the stage two or not? Okay. I think this is something we can. Um, that might be better taken off of line. We've got to make a decision based on planning terms here today, and it will be, as Mr. Weber said, councillors making that decision. Any complaints process is something separate from today. So I'm going to ask um, councillors to come in, if that's okay. Um, so um, Councillor Haldane has a question, first of all. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think um, just before you were about to run out of time, you uh, maybe were going to say that you had tried you talk to the council about what type of vent or application might be acceptable. Uh, I just wanted to ask you to talk about that a little bit, please. Yeah, I mean, I want to clarify because it's, it's unfortunate that we don't have the previous when the enforcement came, uh, notice came and all the previous information. It goes back quite a long time. As I said, four minutes doesn't do me justice. And this whole thing being rushed tonight is not an accurate description of what we've been through. Um, the, the, the original thing which they um, uh, accused us of, the reason why they built the case, why they said we're not allowed to have the fence, is because they used a county act which states that we cannot build a fence over one metre high uh, facing a highway. This is a very vague uh, county act which they've used to kind of uh, enforce uh, something which they wanted. Uh, when I took that up with many professionals, they said, 
that you've had the previous hike two meters, that shouldn't be the reason. Now, that was the main reason. Let me make this clear. That was the only reason they had. That was the only legal grounds they made for this whole case. Um, now, when uh, when th this was addressed legally and, and going back with the planning application, etc., now suddenly it's changed to other things, and that one meter thing has has gone out the window basically. But because we've had the previous uh, fencing at two meters, uh, you, you know we can we are legally allowed to replace that with two meters because that was there for over 50 years. Um, so we are simply just re replacing the previous height with the new height, which is not wrong. Now, in terms of the style of fencing, as I said, that's purely subjective to the person looking at it. And we have chosen this because of the strength and the protection it gives. The examples they've given us of the properties down the road, which have the round top and the black style fencing, that, that is easily something any, any, anyone can climb on there, even the kids swing on that. Anyone can just jump over that and break in. With the fencing we have, the Palisade, it's used across the country, uh, around the corner, it's used in a, in a good few properties because it has the spikes on top. At night time, when there's no one there, it's not easy for someone to just climb on the top and jump over. Um, so there's reasons, there's a lot of reasons why we've chosen this fencing. Now, when going back to your question, when we've gone to the council and said, look, first of all, you, they were being difficult about us going over one metre, even though the neighbours opposite, Mr. Gavin Talpop even, our neighbor that works in the council, he also has a two meter block fence, a block white wall fence, which which to me looks uh, horrendous. Um, that's my opinion, but I'm not the one trying to make him take it down. But the point is that when um, we, we suggested all these things, some of the things, they, they were just like messing us around. They were not being straight with us. And some of them suggested, oh, why don't you put a brick wall or a block wall? That kind of stuff would block out the, the view of people coming around the corner. With this fencing, the highway people have also said that it's not blocking uh, the site uh, sight of line coming around the corner. Many of the residents have said that it looks nice, appropriate. It gives us security. Um, I, 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 you know, as you, uh, the council people are on the, on the um, call right now, and Mr. Andy Webber, the head, has decided to come on as well. Can you please suggest to me what kind of fencing there is in the market that would withstand a group of thugs, uh, vandals coming in in vans and breaking into my site, which I have CCTV security of? And this is the same council who said to, who said to cool. me in one of the correspondents, okay. which I have emailed Thank you. off. Cool. Is Thank that, you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I think we're that, straying a little bit, Mr. Mayor, I think we're straying a little bit away from this particular application. No, no, sorry, the, fun, the fundamental argument, the point I want to answer is about the style of fencing. If they are suggesting metal fencing, the, the, the net style, that can just be cut with a wire cutter. The round fencing that they mentioned from down the road, that's also metal. The only thing is the shape is it's, it's round from the top, but anyone can jump over that. Anyone can just cut through that. It's so easy, single bars. Yeah. So it's, it, we, we've just, when, I, when I put this fencing up, I've seen advice from professionals who put up fencing. That's their job. When they put okay. it up, they're well, thank you. So I, I think... Having, Cool. Thank you. I think I think we've taken from that the um, well obviously as councillors have to balance um, security and the aesthetics of the fence. But um, I'm going to um, ask um, Councillor Shields if he's got a particular question, and then we'll I'm going to ask um, Andy Webber to come back on any issues that have been raised, and then we'll we'll move to debate. Councillor Shields. Well, it's a question to Mr. Sh Ship here. Um, I, I know the frustration in your voice, sir. I also note that this has taken 25 weeks or half a year, which, whichever is the greater. Um, would you be prepared to meet the committee members on site and discuss the, the boundary treatment, the type of fencing, and actually get to the bottom of this? Because I, I personally think you've ag been agonising over this for long enough. Let's just reach a decision that we're all happy with. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm absolutely happy with that. I mean, I, I go to the local uh, councillors, MP, they're all friendly with me. They all decided to take my case on. There's a reason they're doing that. I, I'm, I, I, I generally, I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen. We're hardworking people. So, I, so, I'm so, 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 so. Um, we, so we, I, I'm more than willing to come to a compromise. I'm not a rigid person or being difficult. But I'm being, uh, I, I, the difficulties come from the other side. Um, and this is my problem. This is my frustration. Because the goal is to keep changing. As, as I've mentioned here, that the things that were mentioned previously have not come up today. Today, it's completely different stuff, which so, I've never so, heard of before. So what you're really saying is there is an answer there. We all want to reach it, and we'd like the council to 
do its bit and, and, and reach a compromise, a solution that is going to secure your property to your satisfaction and meet the satisfaction or the requirements of local residents. I'm sure there's an answer there somewhere, but if we haven't found it in 25 weeks, I don't think we'll find it in another 25 weeks unless we actually get on site, do our job and get a decision made. Okay, thank you. I'm going to um, ask Mr. Weber to come in at this point to deal with any issues that have been raised and then I think um, we'll move on. Uh, well, first of all, I, I'm afraid, Tony Shields, with respect, I, um, I'm not sure colleagues can comment on the amount of time we've had the application, but I don't think a site visit is really something that we um, that I would see necessary in this case. I think we've seen all the evidence this evening. You've seen the photographs. You've seen what's proposed. You've seen examples of what might be more permissible in the area, which I think you yourself have commented on, um, was probably more in keeping. Um, I'm not sure what the applicant means by new matters being raised tonight because everything's in the report, nothing new has been raised, um, certainly not by officers anyway. And and certainly there are a lot of matters that he has raised tonight in terms of um, uh, references to a member of my staff um, who I think he would need to uh, deal with outside of this committee meeting by writing into our complaints team. So I've got no record of a follow-up to a stage one complaint. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Well, um, if I can come back to Mr. Weber then. Yeah. Well, as, as, I, as I say, Mr. Weber, this has been the, the one beauty of online um, applications is I've got a separate iPhone here showing up different photographs, different aspects, things that are not being shown with respect by members of your team, different outlooks. And I'm really not very happy that members of the public can send me completely contradictory pictures and different views. And we're meant to swallow what is served up on the screen by the authority i don't we haven't had a 360 view of this i i make no accusation whatsoever however i would like to me this is this is a i can't say the the word i feel this is a ridiculous situation which should have been sorted out long long ago and photographs that are coming up on my iphone as i speak do not concur with what i'm being shown by your officer's presentation so I suggest most certainly that we meet on site and, and leave it and defer it for now because this is going to get a little bit silly because of the contradictory evidence and that's the trouble with online meetings. I think I quite like them sometimes. Chair, sure. sorry to prolong the evening, but I'll come back on that. Um, we're deciding a proposal and you've got the proposal, which is the applicant's own drawing. You've seen photographs of the site. I don't know what's contradictory, um, Councillor, I'm afraid. I think you've got all the information in front of the committee this evening to be able to make a sound decision on this application. And no, I, just agree. I, don't, I don't think there's a need for, for any further delay because this would incur a further delay. Um, and I think you are able to make a decision on this this evening, Chair. So, so, so what pictures are the officer presenting holding back? Because I'm getting contradictory evidence right in front of me. Yeah. So can I just come in on this one? I think if you, I mean, if we go to the report, I mean, one of the reasons for refusal is its um, height and design. I think that's something you've raised already. I don't. I think we can make a decision today on this item. Um, it, that doesn't preclude any fence coming forward in the future that's more closely aligned to the pictures that we've seen later on in the presentation with a better design. Um, so I, I'm not saying that. This has to be the the final um, decision on this on the boundary for this property, but I think we do have enough evidence today to make a decision on this particular design around the property. Um, so I think. Um, yeah, I think possibly yeah. you're right in that we do have enough information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but I'm just thinking about this, and um, the applicant has erected a fence. Yeah in the past which you had to pay for and then pay for the removal of and disposal of has now paid for a planning application to the council which if we are going to take it this evening it looks like it's going to get refused um be because of the planning grounds but everyone agrees that a fence is appropriate a fence is appropriate in this location and that a you know a fence will be erected at some point if we refuse it tonight, send him away. He 
you have to put in another application which is another expense and it's going to be a negative dealing with the council and with the planning department because you know it's twice bitten um i'm not i'm not suggesting that, that the council or the planning department have done anything wrong but it's not been a great uh situation for for either party could we i don't know if there is any room for us to defer it um, amend the application somehow so that we could approve it based on a different design at a later stage and not cause the applicant any more out of pocket expenses okay thank you councillor i think that's we'll take I'll, I'll take that as a question in a second i think councillor allen do you have a point of order is that what you've you've raised point of there is it just that you want to come in on during the debate no it is um I, i'm also um have some photographs sent to me uh, of the surrounding area and um quite honestly this looks more of an industrial area uh, with a, a large gas hopper or, uh, in the background uh, only a short distance from this site but also, I'm very concerned that if a stage two complaint has been made, uh, why were we not informed that one of the complainants, objectors, was actually a council planning officer? Um, I, I do find this rather distressing that this information was not given to us in the first place. Okay. So, Councillor, I mean, I would say on that that this is, that's not necessarily, that's not a planning consideration and that's all we need to make a decision on. And also, I think that um any 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 member of the the council has the same right as every other resident in this borough to do um to engage with the planning process in the normal way so i don't think we should give any time to that during our deliberation on this item and what, and what i will do though is I'm going to go to i find there's a great concern um okay. if we were aware that this was a council planning officer who had actually objected to it then we might have uh, be able to make a decision. I think this should be deferred. I don't think we should be making a decision on this. Chairman, I've been trying to get in and you haven't called me. Sorry, Councillor Garinger. Um, what I'm going to, if that's okay, um, Councillor Garinger, I'm going to ask Andy to just come in on the point that was raised by Councillor Haldane, then I'll go to you if that's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, Councillor Haldane, uh, my understanding is because there's been a number of enforcement cases opened on this site and the planning enforcement team i believe have given some informal advice to the applicant about what might be acceptable but um i don't think that advice has been followed so that's that's the answer to to that question um I, I, i'm going to invite um colleagues from legal to comment on the matters that councillor allen has raised um, because it's immaterial to the merits of the planning considerations in front of you this evening, who the identity of an, an objector is. It's before planning committee, so there is a fair and transparent process. Um, but I'll invite legal if, if they want to make any um, further comments on that. Yes, hello, Alison Letts, legal officer. Now, I do concur with Mr. Weber that obviously any resident, um, irrespective of their employment status or the location of their employment, state, employment should be free to make representations um, upon an application which, which affects them. And um, the identity of any objector is not necessarily relevant. Their, their address may be, but not their personal identity. Thank you. Well, I think, I think it's a material fact that this is actually someone who works within the planning department. I have no objection to any resident making a, a, an objection, but we should at least have been informed that the objector in this case actually works for the planning department. Okay, well, I think we'll... Sorry, um, Alison, we you coming back on yeah, that? Well, yeah, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I have to say, I do disagree with you, Councillor Allen. I think it's it's absolutely important that everybody is able to make a representation on an application which directly affects them um, to maintain that their employment status with the council um, give, should be made public. Um, it does give rise to the assumption that there is possibly something untoward going on, and that absolutely isn't the case. It's imperative that everyone is free to make a representation. Um, the nature of their employment should have no bearing whatsoever upon that. Um, to suggest otherwise suggests that the, the council is not being run in a fair and transparent manner. Well, if that is the case, then why for item number eight this evening, which was an application by someone who's employed by the council, was that made uh, aware to us in the first place where we can make a decision? Because if it's an, an application, 
directly made by a member of staff. That has to be noted in accordance with the council's constitution um, and consequently has to be uh, referred to this committee. So that is a council constitution point. Thank you. The same applies to someone who's actually making um, a complaint or, or bringing an objection. If he works for the council, that should also be noted. Uh, uh, well, I think, I think so. You've had the legal answer to that um, question. And as a point of order, I think we're going to leave that there. Councillor Geiringer, um, I think we have started strange debate. So I'm happy to um, just move into debate now. But Councillor Geiringer, if you had a particular question you had, on this thing or you can start the debate off as well to you. i'm I, i'm just i just want to say something i mean i totally support councillor shields but we should defer for a site meeting the reason is i mean i haven't been sent any photographs no photographs have come, have come up uh, tonight all i see is katie johnson's name with a ring with a k on it not a single photograph not a single diagram the only thing i've got is is the site map that was sent to me with the papers and how on earth uh, can I make a proper decision without even seeing any photographs? They should have been sent to me. So I think the only fair thing is to have a site meeting where I can actually see it for myself. And and, uh, and I think one or two others have called for a site meeting. I mean, if you have a have a site, defer for a site meeting, and 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 then we'll get it sorted next time. Okay. I mean, before we get a response to that, I'm going to ask legal to come in on that particular thing you've raised about not having full access to the the picture today and what implications that has on any decision you make tonight and whether i've had no access to photographs yes it's i know that's what I'm, that's what I'm, yeah that's what I'm, that's what i'm saying yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i thought alison let's legal officer i thought this issue is going to be addressed by the committee clerk forwarding photographs via email We're supposed, you, we're supposed to have those photographs. Photographs should, should be with with the committee papers. Okay, well, we can do it for next time. I think so, Councillor Garing. I think um, you were. Meant, I think you might have been emailed them during this meeting from uh, planning well, officers I, when they realised you didn't. My iPhone. I, I, you know, yeah. I, 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 you know Garinger, that's, use... yeah, that's 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 fine, Councillor Garing. Um, but. Um, but well, for next time, we'll make sure that you get them before. Um, Andy, we have, we have, again, we have, yeah, we've taken, I've taken that point on board. Don't worry. Mr. Weber. Yeah, Chair, um, I'll be obviously guided by what committee decide on this. But um, frankly, um, when we release um, any report to plan committee, all those, um, all the details in the report um, are, are available well in advance of the meeting. And obviously, it's incumbent on members to familiarise themselves um, with the report, but also the site. This site is clearly visible from the public domain and there's no reason for any accompanied site visit with or without officers. So um, I, I really do think, Chair, that um, it's just going to cause an unnecessary delay um, in the suggestion this is deferred for a, for a site visit. Uh, and as I said, members have had the opportunity to go and have a look at this site and I'm sure some have done before this evening. Um, so I, I'm not sure what, what advantage, you know, deferring it um, for a site visit will be. Okay, thank you. Well, well, um, Councillor Sh Shields, I've got a lot of people who want to come in, um, so I'm going to go to them first. Right. Um, so the first person, well, I say a lot actually, I say Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, switching myself on. Um, I thought this afternoon I was doing what everybody would have done, and that is walk round to uh, St James's Road and have a look at the uh, the building in situ. Um, St James's Road is a residential road. Um, you can see from the map, from, from the, um, which, which is enclosed with the papers, that uh, properties have very small front gardens. Um, virtually box sized in some cases and the vast majority of them are very well tended uh you you get a, a distinct impression of the the people the families who live in that road i would also say that um or suggest that some of the photographs that we have seen 
have been, and I think particularly the um, architectural drawing, actually makes uh, the the works look a lot larger than it in fact is. It makes it look a lot longer and, and taking up a greater amount of the road than it is. Um, it is, I would argue, a relatively small area, um, but it is, it does stand out as being, I have to say this, quite unkempt. Um, vegetation is overgrowing it. There, are, there, there is uh, refuse uh, that has clearly been there uh, for some time. And I can understand how residents might feel that uh, it, is, for want of a better phrase, slightly lowering the uh, the tone of the neighbourhood. Uh, all that aside, I think that the the issue before us is is quite simple, quite straightforward. A fence was erected that was out of keeping with the character of this road, and that uh, and when the applicant seeks to have that uh reinstated i don't see how that would that that would then suddenly miraculously fit in to the character of the road i haven't yet heard anything that makes me seriously doubt that the uh, recommendation to refuse planning permission should be supported thank you Okay, thank you. Um, before we move on, so double check that um, people who um, commented and residents are able to leave the meeting now. Um, as we moved into debate, the um, questioning is over. So if I ask committee services uh, to do that, and what we'll then do is move to the debate in full. We are coming towards the end of the evening, so we want to make a some sort of decision by um, quarter two. Um, so what, if I can ask that members when they comment um if they can be um brief but summarize all the points they want to make that would be really helpful um councillor galligan is coming next uh, i tend to to uh, agree with with chris um i mean i know the area um and it is residential it's not uh, it's it's nearby to some industrial units uh, but where this uh, we're talking about is residential, <clears throat> these nice little units. I went round there um, a few days ago um, <clears throat> and looking at photographs of the um, illegal uh, fence that was erected, uh, I can quite understand that that was uh, okay, certainly not suitable for the area. Uh, to have one that's green, I don't really think that sort of improves the, the, the problem. Uh, and what we're talking about here is that, uh, as I agree with, with uh, Councillor Shields, that, you know, it, it, it needs uh, a, a fence along there for security, um, and there should be one, and there is no problem in finding one that actually looks in keeping with the area that part a, a, a another sitting. Um, so I will be voting against this particular uh, application. Hopefully that, you know, a better one will come along that we can pass. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, Councillor Foster, do you want to come in? Sorry, I only just put put the note in. Um, it was really only to make a comment. I know Councillor Shield mentioned uh, a gas holder in one of the photographs. That's no longer there. It's been removed. Um, so some of these photographs and reliance on photographs is perhaps a little bit misleading. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mention a gas holder. Somebody mentioned a gas holder earlier. Not me. Oh, well, I apologise. I heard the gas holder mentioned in, in one of the photographs. Um, and I, like uh, Councillor Galligan, I look at it and say, yeah, we need a fence, but it's got to be the right fence for the area. And um, it, it's straightforward. What's in front of us tonight is this fence and the application is not suitable. Uh, I appreciate Councillor Haldane's concern for the 
um, applicants' uh, financial position, etc. But the reality is we're here to judge a planning application and the planning application, the recommendation is to refuse, and I support that. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Um, as we're moving on with the time, and we've had a number of different possible outcomes suggested, what I'm going to suggest is we now take a vote on the officer's recommendation as it stands and then see where we are once that vote is taken, um, if we have to amend it or uh, do something else. So, Cathy, do you mind... Um, going through a roll call on the officer's recommendation as it stands. Okay. So the recommendation, if I could ask you to say refuse, not refuse, or abstain. So, Councillor Eric Allen. I'm against the officer's recommendation. So, not refuse. Not refuse. Yeah. Councillor Richard Clare. Uh, on balance, I support the officer's recommendation to refuse. Councillor Tim Foster. Refuse. Councillor Vincent Gallagher. I refuse. Councillor Peter Geringer. Well, I'm I'm mindful to refuse, but I'm going to abstain because I haven't seen the photographs. Councillor Amy Haldane. Uh, not refuse. Councillor Tony Shields. I'm going to not refuse. I'm not going to abstain. I'm going to dissent. I think this planning application, as it's served up, is a disgrace. Members of this committee have not and have repeatedly said to the committee chairman they have not been in receipt of the information. It's taken 25 weeks. I dissent. And we will talk about this very soon because this is disgraceful. This brings this authority yeah. into disrepute. Yeah, okay, I'll mark that as abstain. No, no, you mark it as dissent. Okay. Uh, Councillor Williams? Refuse. Councillor Burke? Refuse. Councillor Drew Heffernan? Um, refuse. So we've got six to refuse. Two to not refuse, one abstain, and one abstain with the tent. Okay, um, two, six. So, so can you just go through those numbers again? Sorry. So, sorry. Six, to so six to refuse. Yeah. Two to not refuse. Yeah. One to abstain, and one to abstain with dissent. Okay. Abstaining with dissent is worth four votes, Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, I don't think that is in the Council Constitution, Councillor Shield. No, no, so, we'll, we'll, um, I'll see you about that later. Okay. Um, so um, I need to make a formal declaration. So the um, officer's recommendation is supported and the application is refused. Um, that therefore concludes today's business. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's been here today. Um, I know, again, it's another long committee, um, but um, hopefully as we move through these and get more use them, they'll be a little bit quicker. And as we move through the backlog, we'll get um, shorter meetings. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I shall see you on the first Wednesday of July, if not before.